Very good morning to you. Welcome to the sewing quarter now. It's all about home sweet home today in the sewing quarter world. Uh, so coming up today, we have got, let's take a look. We've got a Sublime Embroider at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, Spot On Lampshades at 10 a.m. Take the Heat and at 11 a.m. our No Hassle Tassels show. So lots coming up today. So stay with us, grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, um, because we're starting out with embroidery. Lots of you have been asking for embroidery, so we're going to start with hand embroidery. Um, of course, lots of way to embroider, lots of different stitches. Uh, we've got reference books for you. We've got beautiful examples here on the show. Um, I'm just going to have a little grab of the book here for you. Whoops. And try not to demolish everything in the, uh, in the process. Oh, there we go. I've failed miserably, haven't I? I'm just like, there we go. Uh, so, this is your A to Z of embroidery stitches, 240 different stitches in here, uh, stitches you may never have even known you needed in your stitching life, but they're all in here, um, which is just, it, look at that, it is a stunning book. Whether you are learning, whether you are an experienced embroiderer, there's going to be some inspiration in here, whether you're just starting out or whether you just need some extra inspiration, then uh, it's, it all, whether, do you know what, you just fancy having, yeah, that's embroidered. It's all embroidered, I promise you, it's all embroidered. Gorgeous, isn't it? 12 95 for this fabulous book. I just, uh, the fact that there's art, stitched art, is just stunning for me. I just think it's absolutely fabulous. Stitches I have never even knew that you could do. Um, so a fabulous reference book, a great gift. And uh, here we go. So it's your Encyclopedia of Stitching and it is 12 95 So this is your Encyclopedia of Embroidery Techniques. I do beg your pardon. QESP84 is, uh, is your code to grab yourself that. Now, it's all full colour illustrated and it just is. Shall I, shall I have another flick? Here we go. So, look, I mean, look, that embroidered. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Um, it takes you through from the very beginning, from the very basics um, all the way through. So if you don't even know what needles to use, as some of us don't, then it's going to take you through there. The different types of threads, the different terminology. Um, we've got Sammy Claridge on the show today. She's very good at illuminating all the different types of um, stitching and also just the different terminology for things because often... You know, you wonder about, well, is a silk the same as a thread? What, what's the difference? So we're going to highlight all of these different things for you today. So as you can see, full colour, beautiful, step-by-steps, lots of different ideas, inspiration. So whatever sort of needlework you're into, it's covered in here. Beautiful. For twelve ninety five. Now, talking of someone who's going to inspire us today, we've got Sammy Claridge. So let's go and take a look at what you're up to. Morning. Good morning. Mwah. How are you? Mwah. Very well, thank you. We're going to have a little sit down. Shall I know. We get to sit down uh, today. I Very like exciting. It. Whoop, going down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it shows a bounce. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Now, Sammy, what do you love about hand embroidery? Um, I love the fact that it um, is really calm and gentle and slow. I love um, whizzing through quick projects on my machine, but I also love sitting in front of the TV and just having a little something I can pick up and put down um, and just the effect you get with the threads and the things you can do with um, hand embroidery is, yeah... It's something I really enjoy doing. So It's something you can take on the train, isn't it? You can take on a journey oh, yeah. if you're travelling yeah. and you've, you've got it there to, to, like you say, pick up, put down any time yeah. you like. Yeah, pick up, put Whether down. Whether you're just having a quick cup of tea and yeah. you just fancy doing something. Yeah. I'm not someone that can just sit still and do nothing. No, me neither. <laughs> so at least if I'm sat down, it, it's like guilt-free relaxing, yes. isn't it? Because yes. you're Forced still relaxation. achieving something. Yeah. You're still doing something and achieving something stunning at the end of it. Yes, yeah, And absolutely. a keepsake. Um, yeah. So on the show today, we've got, uh, because this is, this is a, another thing that we hear from people, is that I'm not creative, I don't know how to do diddle a -da. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can't, I'm not artistic, that's another one. Um, yeah. All these excuses that get in the way yeah. of us doing something. So faced with a, a hoop that's blank with yeah. anything, yeah. hoop, there it is, there we go, <laughs> um, 
it, it, that can be very intimidating for yeah, some people. It can be people. overwhelming, yes, I think it can. And obviously people look at um, embroideries and think, oh, that's, oh, it's so artistic, it's so creative, I can't possibly do that. So we've got some transfers today to show you, to get you started. So this is a great way, whether you just yeah. want to do old style alphabet yeah. and have that as a starting point like yeah. a sample you know that's yeah. how yeah. people like used to learn their sample. stitches isn't it yeah absolutely particularly with cross stitch and things like that but embroidery as well because the embroidery is a bit freer than cross stitch i find um cross stitch obviously uses a lot of the same techniques but obviously you have to be quite precise with it you have to go in certain holes and follow a pattern and things yes. like that whereas embroidery is a good way to get into doing that if you mm. want to to venture into cross stitch you, this is a really good way to get in because you learn the techniques and then you can get more proficient as you go and then you can dive into cross stitch as Lovely. well so. Beautiful. Yeah. So let's take a look. We've got um, on <laughs> the show that. some inspiration there. Just That's just some stitches. Um, I love the fox. He's cute, isn't what he? What stitch has he done He's from? just a long stitch. Really? Yeah. Brilliant. Um, now, we mentioned the transfers. We've got three for you. So if you want to, um, maybe this is how you want to start out, just by uh, doing a name, maybe it's a new baby or something, you want to do the name and the date, then we've got for you three different versions, or, mm, or four. This is your long, this is your skinny letters. Here they are, 6 95 How many times will these transfer? Um, up to eight. Oh, that's good. Um, but then obviously they will stay, um, they will stay, you can still see them. Yes. They don't disappear completely. Um, so then you can use them with a transfer pencil or you can just trace them off oh, afterwards okay. as well. So they're kind of, they last past their transfer, you know, past their transfer So stages. if you know, you know, if you know how to spell a name, then you're good to go. It yeah. takes all of the, the worry yeah. out of it. You don't have to worry about whether or not you've got tidy writing. Yeah, absolutely. This is how I always end up writing yeah. all of our Christmas cards because yeah. my husband says no one can read my writing. So you <laughs> have to do it yeah. fine uh <laughs> <laughs> Funny how to get out of things yeah, like no, that, I isn't know, it? any old way. Yeah. Um, so all of those excuses gone. Use your skinny letters. JTHN96 gets you those 6 95 But maybe you want something, um, you know, a little bit different. Then we've got the tattoo alphabet. So maybe you want to make something for a teenager, a little bit trendy, a little bit funky. Then here we go. We've got our tattoo alphabet there. Um, and I love that you can then place it within a scroll as well. You've yeah, got your that. numbers in there. Um, is that a heart dagger yeah why yeah. not mum heart yeah. dagger yeah. either side uh mother's day <laughs> good there one for the go. boys good <laughs> one for the boys i think as well this one i did um the mr and mrs um uh like wedding napkins, napkins yeah. over there like little hankies i thought they'd be quite nice again with the tattoo because a lot of alternative weddings these days well so. that's the thing isn't it and it's just bringing it up to date yeah um we we have a saying in in our house my husband is far more down with the kids than i am <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, you know, if you want to do something for, yeah. for teenagers and stuff, but you, you like me and you go, I don't really know what they like these yeah. days, um, then maybe go with the tattoo alphabet. Yeah, that's um, a fun one, I think. Also, is. the size of it's really nice. Um, although it is, they say it's tattoo, I think it's just quite a nice font. Anyway, yeah, really. no, absolutely, absolutely. So six ninety five for that. Um, can I take this out of the packet? Is anyone going to mind? I don't know. Here we go. It's coming out. You can never open these things carefully. No, there you, we can't. Go. you can't. Uh, it's got transfer instructions, please read, and how to embroider. Yeah. Oh, look at this. This is good. Oh. There you go. That just protects. That's the page. Oh, right, that's protects, the protection. Because obviously oh. this is the side that has the transfer ink ah, on it. Because I was looking at it thinking, hang on, some of it's transferred. So there you go. It is, it is sizable, isn't it? That's good. Oh, so that, I mean, actually, that within a hoop. Yeah. Unless the name's Eve or something, only three letters. Yeah. I mean, Natasha's going to be a big hoop. Yeah, it's going to be a while. Well, yeah. you probably would get it into this size. I think this is a seven. You can always right. do it on a circle, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Or, yeah, you can fit it into, this, obviously, the scroll. Yeah. And then work out your placement. But, obviously, again, because you get the transfer option, you can trace them off. You don't have to use it as yeah. the, just as the transfer. Um... And um, that means you can get your spacing right before you use up all your transfer, before you put it onto your fabric. So there's always oh, really? that option. So uh, We've got one more, which is your epic alphabet. Oh, did you want to look at the, the epic one? This is the one I'm doing at the moment. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I was going to have to get into this one as well. Again, all of your instructions there. So all of the transfers, you'll be seeing a, a running theme here, 6 95 for each of your transfers. This um, reminds me of a fairground. 
Yeah. I like, like this. Like circus lefty. Yeah. You see, I've got it back to front because obviously mine's a, mine's a transfer. But there you go. You can see it on the screen there. These are great like for practicing. That. Like yeah. we said, like for a sampler, that's what I've done with this one because you can practice all your different kinds of stitching because you've got lots of different kind of, you know, ways round you can do. You could fill them in or you could do just the outlines like I've done with the variegated thread. I so like I reckon that. this is a really good one to start with. Plus it would be great. I think this one would be great if you were doing um, embroidery onto a, like a kid's T-shirt with their name on the front. Oh, yeah, or each a letter would be bag different. Or yeah, something. like school bags and things like that yeah. work really, Book really bags, well. Yeah. Uh, pee bags, let's face it, if any, any kind of bag, they've always got a way to lose it. Yeah. So absolutely. now with their name on it, that's not going to happen also, anymore. You could do initials as well, because again, because each letter's different, so they'd look really fun. Excellent. Oh, um, and then, so you, you can do the whole name thing. Yes. And then yeah. you can pop some flowers here, then over. So yeah. actually, you. you Whilst, yes, you can be the designer, the hard work is done for you. You just pick the flower that's going to fit in the gap that you've got. Um, here are your flowers. Oh, there you go, they're on the screen. Perfect. So, again, six ninety five. But This is great. This is a really easy way now to be able to get embroidering um, in the way that you want, personalised for you or whoever you're embroidering for. Yeah, yeah absolutely, because you can do it to particular colour tastes or you can do it with particular... Um, you know, interior design in mind. I love the idea of embroidering um, bunting around a kid's room. Oh, yeah. And embroidering the, the alphabet or their name to go around. That's what I would like to do. Um, what are we embroidering with, though? Because that's obviously the next question, isn't it? How do we... What do we use? What yes. are the tools? So not only does Sublime Stitching do gorgeous templates um, and transfers, they also do gorgeous thread packs as well. Oh, we love the thread packs. We do. We, we had one the other day, but we're gonna, that's why I said I wanted to do a show just with them, because they deserve their own show, because they're absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm going to start off with a taffy pull, if I can find that. You may not have it, because I may have used it. Have you? Oh, you've <laughs> got it! Have we got Hang on. This is taffy pull. Oh, there she is, yeah. Oh, that's the rainbow. We've got so many. <laughs> Mingles. Another one. There you go. Of course it's that's the last taffy. one I come to. Of course it is. Here we go. This is your taffy pull. We love this because um, it's, it's like an ombre, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is like ombre. Can I actually, can I show yeah, you yeah, what you've means, done? Because yeah. this is in your taffy pull and you can just see how that thread... So not only have you got kind of the circus going on, but you've got it in these fabulous colours that then blend and, and you've got almost movement within the colour and then... Oh, it's just brilliant. So seven of each of the colours, eight metres of each in your skein. Um, and it's the finest product quality cotton. It is... Um, also, colour fast, isn't it? Yes, so it if is, you do yeah. need to wash, maybe you've put it on a book bag or a um, T-shirt or something yeah. like that. It is colour fast. You're not going to lose those really vivid colours. Uh, they are going to stay. We love this one. That's it. It's that's your favourite, favorite, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I did the biggest embroidery in there. I'm going to... Um, actually, can I just... Oh, here we go. Because... They're lovely and smooth to work with. Now, this is actually... That's this the is the mingles. mingles. Ooh. But I I'm just want you to later. be able to see on there. Can you see the sheen on these? So this is... Um, this, is this is for your special projects, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. We do a 100 thread pack, which is 14 95 Yeah. So, which is great for just your everyday or popping noses on things. But if you want something super special, if you're creating something that's a gift, uh, that's to commemorate the birth of a child or, uh, you know, something that is uber special, go with these. Wedding gifts. Things yeah. Like that, that you want to actually, you know, that's something that's going to last. Yeah, absolutely. Something that is heirloom, then, then use that super special thread. It's a treat. It's a treat to work with as well. It is really gorgeous well. to work with. Yeah, splits beautifully yeah. doesn't tangle doesn't twist there's a time and a place for all sorts of threads this is on your super special ones um this is uh your mingles sublime embroidery floss and it's 7.95 so we're looking at a smidge over a pound a skein yeah which you that's, know that's to buy individually good. skeins in the shops are, are, are about a pound and obviously these you get them pre-mixed and they're beautiful beautiful quality to buy this quality they'd be much more than a pound per skein you get what you pay for yeah you do with these definitely um, and and here you can just i mean in that gold thread there with the green it is exquisite 
This is the mingle. So we've, what they've done is is put colour families together. Oh, hang on, I've missed a mingle. <laughs> he wasn't mingling at all. He was lo He was a loner. Let's check out the loner, Mr. Mingle. Yeah. There you go. I love that blue actually and the silver. That's really pretty. That is really. That, really that would be nice. Um, did you used to have games kits? Did you used to have to have your, yes, your yeah, initials, initials on the game? Yeah, on my kit? on my netball skirt on yeah. the bottom corner. Yeah, and my science lab coat. Mate, oh goodness, <laughs> yes. Uh, let's have a look at the rainbow next. So we've done taffy, we've done mingles. They're all seven ninety five. This is your rainbow. So each of these is seven ninety five. You get seven skeins in each. Each skein is eight meters. This is your rainbow here. Um, it, it does what it says on the packet. It's a rainbow. Yeah. And in fact, each of these kits are basically a rainbow. It's just getting the tone. Each of them has a different tonal quality. Yeah. So it's which tones you want to work with. Yeah. Um, but just stunning. And you can see again. She picks her colour. Jenny, who does this, picks her colours beautifully. They're so vibrant. Even the past, even, though, even the soft tones are still really clear colours. They're not muddy. That's very true. And again, I think it's because they've got that beautiful sheen on them. Mm. You get a really, you know, beautiful, you know, but you get, colour transfer. You get the same level of intensity within each pack, don't you? Yeah. So the, the, the vibrancy on here, absolutely fabulous. And you, you get that tone across the whole co collection there. Seven ninety five for your rainbow. If you were starting out and you didn't have any thread and you wanted to start out with a beautiful thread, then actually what a great way to start with just your basic rainbow. Yeah, gorgeous. And I must admit, it does make a lot of difference working, particularly if you're learning, um, working with really good quality thread, which these are. They're just amazing quality. But you see, maybe you're doing for a new baby and you want to go with the pastels. This is your frostings. How pretty is that? She also does this lovely thing where they've all, each individual... Um, skein colour has a name and then what is it and a number and a name and a number and then it's got like a little written on it oh nice and this one's called um peach cheek and it's got a little phrase that says uh you're a cheeky peach hey. so it's you know when you're buying into you're buying into the when you're buying these you're buying into her brand as well it's the blind stitching brand which it's is you know, she's Jenny Hart, her name is. Mm. And she's got such a lovely ethos around her company. Um, the about thing bringing is... Bringing embroidery, like, mo bringing embroidery to be modern and fresh and trendy and exciting. So. When, you, when you pick up a skein like that and it's got, it's got a name, yes, yeah. it's got a number, that's yeah. standard. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a name... Which is cute. Yes. And then a little saying, yeah. that made you smile. Yeah, it So does. already it's put you in a good mood yeah, yeah. to start whatever it is that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. That's worth every penny. Well, particularly with craft supplies, because let's face it, they, they, you know, craft supplies are pretty beautiful and some of them can be pretty standard and, you know, embroidery threads are, are, you know, look gorgeous. But that added little level of, you know, that someone's gone to the time and effort of really taking care of choosing something really specifically for you you know, to make what you're doing so much more enjoyable. For me, that's, you know, that's... It's, it's worth everything. It's, yeah, worth every penny. Uh, it's, it's that little extra touch, isn't it? Yeah. It's that personal touch. You, you, you're getting a, a little piece, and that's gorgeous. Now, this has got things like avocado, raspberry, yeah. uh, raspberry whip. All sorts in here. And this is your uh, fruit salad. It's delicious. And it says on the back, a picnic basket full of um, uh, edible colours just for you, just from me, Jenny. Yeah. Oh, no, I, hang on, I hadn't realised that all of these have a little thing on the back. Yeah, they've got like a little... So the, the, the frosting that we just looked at says sugary, sweet and calorie free <laughs> colours picked just for you, just from me. Oh, this is great. What does it say on the rainbow one? A double rainbow's worth of colours just for you. Again, just from me. And then with your mingles, pre-blended colours brought together just for you. Oh, this is lovely. What are we going to look at next? I noticed on the mingles, this, the Flower black box. and white one is called Dalmatian and it's 101. Amazing. It's number 101. Oh, Made I love really that. really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very easily pleased, aren't I? <laughs> well, no, that makes me that makes me yeah. that makes me happy too. Having a large black and white great day, yes, that everyone gonna... goes, "Oh, look at the Dalmatian!" <laughs> mm, it's not 
light. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is your flower box. Again, if you have uh, any, well, you've you showed us. We've got actually on the get your words out, Natasha. Over there, you did a thing where you embroidered onto a pre-patterned. Fabric. Fabric, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And this would be the perfect one to match in with those colours. In fact, that is the one I used. Oh, well, there you go. That I did not know that, yeah, but that makes sense. Box one. That is the one I used, yes. I used our Lola fabric. Um, which we've and, got coming up at 10 o'clock. Yes, which I um, used like, a bit like a paint by numbers. Yes. So again, if you're not keen on the idea of doing a transfer or none of the transfers appeal to you, if you've got a fabric, again, particularly at the moment, can we floral show fabrics you know that, are very in fashion. Can you see the one I mean? I don't know if we can see that very easily over there. The, the one that's been embroidered onto the Lola fabric. Shall I just go and grab it? Say, that, yeah. Wait there, um, I'll be back. It's I'm a great, get it. um, it's a great thing to do. Again, if you're starting, if you're practicing, um, it, you know, use it like a paint by numbers and use the, the, the design on the fabric and then embroider over the top of. So this is the Lola fabric that we've got coming up later. And it's just giving that extra dimension, isn't it? So yeah. you've, you've used the colours that are in. So this is the blah, flower, this flower box. flower box. So I picked out the hot pink and the, the greens. And if you... Oh, actually, you can see on the back where... Yeah. <laughs> Very neat, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and you can just see some stitching done through there. So actually... It's giving you texture, it's giving you another dimension. Yeah. It's very pretty. I've done some French knots on these bits here just to give them a little bit of texture and stuff. I, the idea with this is that what yeah, I want to do when I finish doing it is um, I want to actually cut this out. So cut it out and use it as an applique on a T-shirt. Oh, wow. Because, you know, the fl floral embroidery, you've probably seen me wear before. Yes. I've got a couple of tops yeah, that have got floral got, yeah. embroidery. So I want to cut that out and put and it on a T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Because I love the idea of, obviously, the heavily embroidered, but that does take an awfully long time. And I kind of feel like the fashion might be over by the time I get around to doing an entire flower. They've moved on. <laughs> They've left you behind. Particularly with the amount of work I've got to do for here as well. <laughs> you know, my um, shows for here. So I was like, that's a nice, quick way of getting something that looks really effective. Flower box just says, does your garden grow yeah. with colours just for you? Right, next up is Laurel Canyon. Now... California cabin colours to decorate your hideaway. I love it. This yeah. is kind of, obviously she's um, American, um, so they're going to be American themed, but I love this, that kind of teal and that pink and that mustard, Blue really kind of, of almost kind of vintage retro. But again, you can see, even though they're, they're those, they're, they're not muddy colours, they're still quite clear and strong and fresh. They are very they're... intense. I think that's yeah. the beauty of these colours, and you, yeah. you know, and that's really important because they're not going to wash out. This colour does not wash out. They are colour fast. Uh, they are good to go. Um, and there you go, seven ninety five, just over a pound of skein. But, oh, my goodness, what beautiful colours. They're going to look clear and fresh year after year after yeah, year, especially if you've got them absolutely. on your wall or things like that. Um, I mean, I've got quite a lot of the ones over there, actually, from my sewing room, <laughs> from my sewing room at home. Um, and I've got them on the wall and... Um, I've used a couple of the, the threads um, I've used to buy stitching threads before and they still look just as bright and colourful as the day that I embroidered them and some of them were years ago. No, that, I mean, that's, isn't it? Is you don't want to make something and then have it fade no, or the colours so that you choose yeah. the colours that you want at the time because they're the colours you want, not a version of or a faded out yeah, version. Yeah, no, you want it to be... Colour fast, yeah. always. And if you want to be... And, you know... Ha life happens, things get yeah, dirty, yeah, and then you yeah. have to wash them, then that's fine. So, of course, you know, you can use these with all of your embroidery transfers. They're all from the same company. They work hand in hand together. Epic is the most popular. Down the bottom there, six ninety five for your Epic. We decided circus. Yeah. You know, fun and vibrant and bright and just brilliant. It's a friendly one, isn't it? And so fun, as I say, for practising all your different stitches because you've yeah. got so many different designs within the one pack. You know, you can pick and choose. This one is the parlour one, which just says absinthe-soaked and velvet-cloaked <laughs> colours just for you. Absinthe always scared me a bit, having worked in many a bar <laughs> and watching yeah, other people do yeah. it. Never, never went there. Um, <laughs> but this is, there you go, this is your parlour that gorgeous yeah. deep burgundy on the end there. It's you can really just see, pretty. even through the plastic, you can see that sheen on there, yeah. which is going to give that luster to your work. Yeah. It, it, it is just going to make your work uh, absolutely shine. And make it's going to make you want to sort of 
oh, it's touching. Oh, yes. oh lovely. Yeah. Uh, should we have a look at the last one, which is portrait? And yeah. then we've gone through the nine different options. Uh, lovely skin skin tones, hair tones in here. So perfect if you've got, if you're trying to do um, anybody's facial features or hair or anything like that. Lip gloss and smoky eyes. Cosmetic colours just for you. Yeah, Jenny does a lot of, um, some of her other embroidery um, designs and things like that are quite kind of, retro 1940s ladies with gorgeous oh. like victory roll hair so that works perfectly for those is that what designs. it's called victory roll yeah yeah that kind of 1940s and they all had it they mm -hmm. all knew how to do it yeah i'm rubbish at doing hair i always yeah. were quite impressed with that <laughs> uh sammy what are you doing then um well i'm just doing basic embroidery what i was going to do today was going to show you how to um some embroidery basics so i want to show you how to hoop up um and how to pull tight some fabric and then I wanted to show you how to how to actually use the embroidery transfer. Okay. Um, so we're going to do that. What is um, the best fabric to use to embroider? Um, either um, cotton or linen work really well. You want something with a reasonably even weave, but you can, in theory, embroider onto pretty much anything. Okay. Um, right. In my time, I've embroidered onto tweed and. Um, anything as fine as organza you just have to be careful obviously when you're using those kinds of fabrics because the weave is different yes um to be careful with your is foxy your foxy stick. over there on tweed yes he's on tweed do you want to go and grab him <laughs> yeah, i don't know if we can um, so he's you know so it, it's it is a matter of if you can hoop it, you can embroider on it. Yeah, then, basically. pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Just also to... there's, um, you know, there's people who have um, embroidered onto um, things like car doors. And, you know, they've pre-punched holes into car doors and then embroidered through. I mean, yeah, the, the, the limit, you know, there's, it's limitless, the things you can do with it. But this is um, brilliant. But yes, I would say if you want to get started, any fabric that you've got around the house, really. I mean, we've used our gorgeous cottons because they work really well. Mm hmm um, and they stretch beautifully and obviously they're very evenly weaved. This so. is a nice size hoop to start off with. It's too, it's not too intimidating. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah what is this, 20, cen 20 centimetres? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Eight, 8 inch, I think, about. So what I normally do with my um, fabric is I replace my bottom of my hoop, so that's the piece with, um, with no screws on it at the bottom. Mm. And then I will lay my fabric over the top. You can see this one has already been hooped, but I'm just going to do it again. So if you're, like when you use the Lola fabric, yes. if you need to pop in, um, if you're, it's like fussy you're cutting, isn't it? Yes. You, you yeah. would position it so that absolutely it fitted in there yeah. how you wanted. Obviously, I've also cut away the excess here just so I don't stitch it in. But um, I would normally leave... I've done the same with my other white one because I'm leaving it in the hoop. But if you're going to be taking it out of the hoop, you mm. just need to make sure that you've got enough um, fabric either side of your hoop to be able to pull it tight when you um, it up over. Some hobbies mount up expense wise yeah. but if you're looking at this 395 for hoop that you can use time and time again oh i mean yes that is the idea that you do use your hoops or over and over you and can over again. use them as the frame yeah which yes. actually 395 yeah. for a frame yeah is still expensive. brilliant i mean obviously still our brilliant. nice wall display there Absolutely. shows beautifully how you can just use a hoop and um, pop some fabric in and it looks gorgeous so. yeah so you you know you're looking at maybe home decor uh, you can and that's you know, that's it, isn't it? It's great. Yeah. When we did the silk painting the other day, yeah. you can just leave it in the hoop. Don't have to have it as a scarf. You can just do it. So there's your hoop, 395 VMGQ07. We've got all sorts of different sizes. So if you are looking at maybe creating beautiful displays for yes. you, maybe yeah. you could have... Um, all uh, different sizes, three different stairs. sizes. Yeah. You could do that, couldn't you? Do you remember um, it used to be the thing to have the flying ducks? Yeah. Uh, you could do that in hoop <laughs> sizes. <laughs> Uh, just a well, like I say, on the wall of my no um, on, the, on the wall of my <laughs> sewing room, I've got um, loads of different hoops with all different. I've got like a couple with some weaving in as well, and all kind of different. Um, nice. Some just some pretty fabric, and then obviously some of my embroideries as well also go in the hoops. So. Well, it, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. I, it's, there's no two ways about it. And I've I've got um, various embroideries that my grandmother did, you know, and and we've reframed them, yeah. and she did. Um, she embroidered some Beatrix Potter oh, characters. Gorgeous. And um, and then, you know, I got two and my brother got two when we both had babies. Yeah. Uh, so, we've got hoops there. Lovely, yeah. So, I've just... My hoop underneath... Yeah. All you need to do is unscrew the top slightly so that it, um, um, it gives you a little bit of room to manoeuvre and then pop that down over the top. 
if you're positioning it, obviously you want to make sure that you get your um, uh, hoop, and if you're leaving it in, mm. obviously you want to make sure that you get your um, hoop screw at the top. Um, otherwise, it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it anywhere you like. Yeah, no, I did make that mistake. You want to make sure you put it at the top if you're going to leave it at the top. Because obviously, yes. you want to, when you want it to hang up, you want it to hang the right way. Or even if you're leaning it against something, it, yeah. it will always roll so that that is at the top. Yes. I've discovered. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hmm. So okay. do you tighten it part way or how, do, how much do you tighten? I tighten as much as I can finger tight. Right. Here. So that's kind of finger tight now. Hmm. And I'm going to turn it over to the other side and I'm going to go diagonal opposite corners and pull across. Okay. To tighten. How tight should it be? I mean, do we need to be Again, gentle with this? Again, it's kind or? of, it's kind of um, medium pressure. Don't yank it too tight. You don't want it to pull it so tight because obviously what happens is that when you let it go, if you do your embroidery on your fabric and it's too tight, mm. um, it's going to pull in. When you let, when you take, if, if you take it out of the hoop. Yeah. Um, also, you want to be able to, for it to be slightly manoeuvrable within the hoop, so that when you're actually using it, you can manoeuvre that. If I put it that way, you can see. I want to be able to get my finger so that I can embroider from the top mm. all the time, so that I don't have to go through to the back if I don't want to. Okay. So it needs to be flexible enough that you can. Put, by leaving this in, you can always go back and retighten at any time. Which again is why I say always leave enough, enough to, to yank enough on. to at least you know finger grab either side, and just want to make sure it's even all the way around. Again, you can quite easily check with these fabrics because obviously they've got a dot that makes it quite easy to tell, yeah. and also you can see the grain quite happily on the fabric. So you just want to make sure that none of it's too wonky. Beautiful. And then there you go. And then I would go back in with a screwdriver and right. tighten that up to really, tighter, really make just sure so it doesn't, doesn't go off of, as I'm kind of manhandling it and manoeuvring it around. Excellent. And then um, once you get going, oh, that is, it's taut like a drum, isn't it? Yes, yeah, taut like a drum. Yeah, absolutely. But you've still got enough flexibility that you can get in there and push it up if you need to. Nice. And then if you if you want to get going now, here's the thing. I know we are past the spring equinox, mm -hmm. but. Light and embroidery go hand in hand together. You've got they to have a good do. light. What we've brought for you today on the show is this little lamp. Now, it's a four-in-one four crafter's lamp. We've chosen it especially for you today. Here's why. You can, if you're doing something that has instructions, then you can hook it on. Yeah. I think this is brilliant. Um, and then... I like to think of this as a snack pot. I'm reliably informed it's not. <laughs> uh, but you can... I totally put my own hands in there, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm just stealing some of your no, things No, by all means, go ahead. So you can put your skeins in there. You can put your little... Uh, you can put your little scissors in there, your pens in there. Uh, all these sorts of things can all go in. And then you've got them to hand. Because, let's face it, once I sit down in the evening... I don't want to get back up again <laughs> until I have to go to bed. So uh, this is a floor lamp and a desk lamp. So you get the base, then you get an extender. So you can have it anywhere you like. You've got this to put any pattern or anything like that. You've got your, your little caddy there. And then over here, this is... Here we go. This is your lamp. So, as you can see here, you've got a six-inch, two-times magnification... Um, uh, what do you call it there? Um, lens. That's what I want. Oh, yep, there we go. Let's put old Dalmatian under there. Let me just angle that. Oh, look, you can see that. So that, the Dalmatian is from the Mingles. So there you go. You can see two times magnification. That is an ophthalmic quality lens in there, six inches. And here's the thing. This will mean, let me just show you the colour here. This is a dimmer one, so you can have it as bright or otherwise as you wish. Um, also, what's really important about this, you've got 21 LED non-heating bulbs. So That's you can always, you've got a little, little handle on there, you can just manoeuvre it around to exactly where you want it, to angle it on exactly what you want, and then just spin it around. What is really important here for me, can I borrow that for a second, yeah. please, is your colour matching. So, whee! 
you can there you go it's two times magnification but we're just we're just having a little play with that the thing i love about the led is that obviously if you ever had a daylight lamp in the past you would you have to buy the bulbs they're really expensive yeah and with these you hard, you know it's so rare that you're going to have to change one out they, it, because they last forever. They, they do have a very long life on them. You've got 21 there. They don't heat. So even if you've been um, sewing all evening, you can still manoeuvre it and there's going to be minimum heat in there. And that's the beauty of it. No more also, scorching your fingers as you do. Also, when you're working close up to something, you're not going to get hot. I yeah. don't know, I'm, I'm a warm person anyway, but um, sometimes if I'm working particularly in the summertime and I've got the, you know, and it's evening and I've got the lights on and I'm like, oh, it's so hot, I can't bear to do anything. Mm. Whereas with these, obviously, they don't get hot, you don't feel hot when yeah. you're using them, so it means you can craft for hours without feeling too hot and stuffy. When we had these in the studio, first of all, and, uh, and we were talking about um, colour matching, because this is the thing, once you, um, once you get to evening and yellow light, yeah. then you get to the stage where actually it's very difficult to trust the colour that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, and that's where these lights are absolutely second to none because you can get the exact colour. And every single guest had a story either personally or of a friend who had worked so hard on something and then got up the next morning and it was the wrong colour. Yeah. In fact, there was even a story about someone whose who's nan had knitted a jumper and just a little square at the end was a different yeah. red. It was a hot, an entirely red jumper and just a little square was the wrong oh, red. So she... shoulder-storing when yeah. you've worked so hard on something for so long and then it's just that last little bit. So, little caddy there, uh, your hook there for instructions or pattern if you're knitting, something like that. We'd and probably then you've hold got a, that. Um, pr would probably hold one of these as well, actually. would probably hold a hoop. Let's try it. If you were doing lots of uh, French knots, for instance, and you needed two hands. Okay. It exactly does that. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really good. Hey, and then you see... Oh, that twizzles around, by the way. So then you can just... Oh, so yes. if you're doing something particular and you want both hands around to be able to... Or, for instance, if you do get a knot or something and you want to have a, you know, two hands free to deal with it properly... And, of course, because you've got the bendy necks on both this part and the, the lamp then you can get it exactly to the focus you that you it require it on. Let me just um, show you while the light's on there. So there you go. That's... Oh, you can really see the difference in the light, can't you? Yeah, you, you so can. So that's it, just normal normal light. And then... Dun, 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 do you want to see the real light? Yeah, as bright as you like. So floor lamp, desk lamp, table lamp, four in one... Forty nine ninety five FYGQ zero six. I love that too because obviously, not all of us have a lot of space in our sewing rooms. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> or in our lounges, if we have cats and things, they always get knock on things on the floor. So it's yeah. nice to be able to have the option just to yeah clip it onto the side of your chair or a side table, your coffee table or something. There we go. Sharon's been in touch. Great value on the skeins. Yeah, she really says, good. and she's getting some. Good. Yeah. Should we have a look at some of those skeins again? Yeah. Because um, so so popular, we've got nine options for you. Do you do you find the project first and then find the colours, or do you find the colours and then get inspired to do the project? Oh, I'd say it depends. Depends on what the project is, really. I would say quite often I do get inspired by colourways. Like I'm quite a colour orientated person. Um, so if I saw something like, for instance, the portrait pack and I was like, oh, I really want to do something quite, although it's kind of, it is meant to be portrait, I'd actually go for something quite wedding orientated with that pack. Yeah. Because of the greys and the pinks, you've got the kind Beautiful. of male and female. Let's go through them all. So your taffy pull there, that's your taffy pull. Each of these seven ninety five. so I'm not going to keep giving you the price, they're all seven ninety five, and you get seven in each and they're eight metres of each skein. This one is your rainbow. Again, 795, your code ACHN36. Uh, what does it say on the back of the rainbow packet? Let's have a look. Um, a double rainbow's worth of colours just for you. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at flower box. What does flower box say on it? I've lost my flower, but oh no, here it is. Does your gar how does your garden grow with colours just for you, just from me? So that's your flower box, GNHN. 65. Parlour next. 
Oh, this was this was the absinthe one, wasn't it? This yeah. is your absinthe soaked and velvet cloaked colours just for you. It does have that velvet in there, doesn't it? And the absinthe is that green in the middle. Yes, that gorgeous kind of... It is proper, that is proper absinthe colour, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Hideous stuff. Um, <laughs> didn't that make um, Van Gogh cut off an ear? Wasn't that an absinthe? Yeah. Yeah. Not the same as the absinthe, absinthe we have now, though. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we looking at next? Uh, your Laurel Canyon. Well, I just had that in my hand a minute ago. I, oh, it's the... It's the uh, oh, yeah, these colours are gorgeous. These are earthy tones, Rich, aren't they? Real yeah, good kind of earthy retro. tones. California cabin colours to decorate your hideaway. Now, portrait. Let's look at the portrait one. These were your skin tones, but you said also that you'd use this one for weddingy ones as well. Yeah, Lip gloss and smoky colors. eyes, cosmetic colours, just for you on your portrait. Uh, frosting is next, I do believe. These are great for your baby colours. Soft. Yeah. Feels like cotton candy, doesn't it? Yeah. Sugary sweet and calorie free colours picked just for you. Beautiful. That's, that's kind of a silver in there, actually. If you're after a silver, go for that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit Elsa, if you mm. uh, know what I mean. Yes. Nudge, oh. nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, fruit salad. A picnic basket full of edible colours just for you. Mmm, beautiful. Oh, this is the one with your uh, raspberry whip and your avocado. Nice. Mingles. Hello, Mingles. Pre-blended colours brought together just for you. I love you've got kind of silver and gold threads through there. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Um, what are we doing? I'm just going to stitch some of the Mingles because I love how they look when they're done with long stitch. Oh, OK. Because they're pre-done for you. And obviously they look gorgeous in the pack, but I thought if people could see how they actually looked when they're stitched, it might help people to decide. Was that a message that from of... Anne? Oh, do you line your fabric with any stabiliser? Great question, Anne, actually. It depends. If I'm going to be taking it out of um, out of the hoop, then yes, I would normally either put um, a tear away, um, a wash away, or um, just an ordinary interfacing, iron-on interfacing on, on the reverse. Right. Yes, you can okay. do that, absolutely. Um, if I'm leaving it in the hoop, I generally won't. Oh, okay. Because, um, and, and also, and again, it does depend on the fabric. With cotton, if you're leaving it in the hoop, it's generally going to be stable enough to hold the weight of the thread. Right. Um, but if you're using something lighter weight, for instance... I've done um, stitching on organza, or if you're using something like a lawn, yes, because, again, the, the fabric will pull if you stitch too tightly. So, yes, uh, a stabiliser would be a good idea. And if you're working on something like an organza, these, these skeins are... It, it's twisted, six strands of thread twisted, yeah. but you can always break that down, can't you? You can cut it and split oh, the yeah, threads. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can always work on, on much finer detail from anything from one strand up to the six. It depends how quickly you want this, this to take to shape, up. really, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can see how quickly... I'm, this is full six-stranded, these mingles. Lovely. Um, but obviously, you can split them down. I mean, that is the joy of the mingles as well. It's because it's pre-mixed double colours, you actually end up getting twice as many colours in the pack. Beautiful. Because you can obviously split them down into... Now, um, the next question that I know we're going to get is, how do I organise all of these? I want to show you something here. Because... For four ninety five, I do believe. Okay, I just need to say first of all, uh, you don't get all the colours. <laughs> this is Sammy's hard work that has put these in. But this is your organiser. Yours can look like this, but you get one hundred of these little things, They're which summer. look like this, and each one of these will hold a skein. So it it's just means that as soon as... If anybody has ever got hold of a skein and started to just tug on one end, uh, yeah, <laughs> it knots, it's a nightmare. They are, yeah. And then how do you store them? You store them like this. But actually, 4 95 for this is incredible value. N0GQ50. That will hold 100. And in here... We do do a pack of 100 colours, and that's yeah. what's in here, is that rainbow yeah. of 100, which is a great place to start um, if you just want to practice. Yeah. Now, we've obviously, we've got the sublime uh, stitching threads for those super special um, stitching, but if you just want to start off with 100 threads to get you going, um, 
then we've got those on the show as well. But this, four ninety five to hold all of your threads. Now, we had someone ask, how do you actually do this? Because, it, you know, it looks like it might be really obvious, but actually I would get myself in a knot with it. Yes, Not so a lady um, contacted me on Instagram and said that she was getting a bit tangled. She'd bought her 100 thread back and she'd bought her... Um, her uh, her box and she'd given up halfway through well in two in um, because she got a bit tangled so I thought I'd show you how I do it well let's face it if you buy the hundred and these will come actually in beautiful color order we've had a rummage in there because we've used some so it will yes. come beautifully organized for you so don't worry but that's just to show that's what your hundred thread that's how much you get in your hundred thread uh, you do get 108 meter skeins in there um, and that's for 14.95 so if We've we've got we've got the we've got everything, haven't we? You've yes. got your basic threads here, which are perfectly usable, um, and you know it's going to absolutely get you going. Um, but if you want sort of the Rolls Royce of threads, we've got those for you with the Sublime stitching. So something for every pocket um, and every need as well. You know, maybe your kids are going to embroider. You don't want to give them the posh stuff. Yeah, if you want to give so, them the stuff. Too. Yeah. So, and of course, maybe you want your kids to start doing their names, things like that. Then we've got the transfer. So we've got the skinny letters here, six ninety five, And then we've got the tattoo. Oh, epic. Where's the epic one? Uh, yeah, I've got the tattoo one here. Oh, this is your tattoo. How easy are they to transfer? Really easy. In fact, if we've got a little bit of time, I'm going to show you one. We've got about 10 minutes left. Yeah, should be fine. Oh, okay. Take two seconds. Should we do that now? And then yeah, we'll, we'll do that now. And then we'll do the... Yeah. The the Let me just show you very quickly. This was your mingles. That's what it looks like when it's been... So that's super fast. Haven't done anything very fancy. Just a couple of little hearts. Because Pretty, isn't it? Cute. It looks like candy canes. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's gorgeous. Just so that's so your edible. mingles. Seven ninety five for your mingles. Uh, right, let's get transferring. I'm just going to take this fabric out of this hoop because we need to do it out of the hoop. Okay. It needs to be flat because we want to iron it. The iron is on. Good. Do you want me to go Handy. and get the? Shall I get the iron across? Yeah. Shall we? I'm let's do, do that. Oh, you're going to do the flowers. Right. I sent you this one. So. I love this. I love that you can you can be your own designer, but with beautiful letters, so that you don't actually have to worry about your lettering. Yeah. It's all done for you. Let's move that out of the way there. So you need a hot iron. If you've got a craft iron, is that good to use too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anything you just need. Oh, hello, you're cutting into heat. it. I am cutting into it with these ones, yes, because I don't want to use all of them. Right. And obviously you get the... the um, oh, I just never so this is your floor. flowers. We're about to... <laughs> Where did it go? Down here. Ah, it's it. down there. We'll get that. So... Um, if you, but if you have something like your little clover mini iron, oh, yeah. then you could, you could just go over the letter that you want yes. and you don't have to yeah. cut it all up. Yeah, absolutely. So this is one of your flowers we've cut out. So this is out of your fantasy, fl fantasy flowers. Yes. 6 95 Which way up? So you need to put it um, the, the dark side down because that's the side with the transfer Go to the dark it. side. So I'm just going to pop that right in the centre. What, what heat should I have this iron on? I need to have it on a two, I think, and no steam, please. I'm just going to double check on the instructions. What's Cotton a or wool. The two little dots there. Oh, that one. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's on new iron. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. I've had much excitement one in the building over an iron. iron. No. It's a big, meaty one, yeah. isn't it? No if, well, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Just going to pop it on there to make sure it's not wet in any way because you don't want any steam or any water okay. going on here. And then how long do you hold it on for? Depends on how dark you want your stencil to be. So I've just passed that over. I'm just going to pull it up slightly, make sure. And that's the kind of impression that you get. Can you see? I might have to go overhead to have a look and see what that looks like. Let's lift it up, shall we? Yeah, go on. It's then. very light, although it does look a lot darker here. Can you see that on there Just at all? about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So you can see that's just one pass over with the iron. So how intense you want that is up to you. Yeah. So shall I do another one? But so if you're working see? with your lamp, then you're not going to need... The thing is, you don't... The thing is also, the, the thing is that these don't wash out. Right. So normally if you're using a transfer pencil or something, they would... That you can wash those out. These transfers don't wash away. So what okay. you don't... Is you don't want it so dark... The, oh, that it that comes you're gonna, through the No, absolutely. Yeah. So let me pop this to one side and I'll hold it and I'll do the other end. And I'll do it a bit darker so you can see how dark you can get them. Obviously, they're still really subtle. 
And obviously it means you can use them over and over again. So that one's got a bit more, so that's a little bit more intense. Yeah. So you can see those there. Yeah. They look a lot more intense in real life than they do on the camera, but... But still, they're, they're light enough that you can see them, but they're, they're also not dark enough that you're going to notice once you've stitched over the top of them. Like and her say, lines are beautifully do. fine. Especially so if, you're, when you go over the top. if you are literally just stitching on that line. Yes. Yeah. Then that's it. Yeah. So th this is how you use your transfers. Now, the other thing, thank you, but You Sammy. can see how simple that was. So easy. easy. And it's just, it, it's right there. And it, it won't come off now. You can, you know, rub it as much as you like. You know, manhandle it as much as you like, and it well, you will budge. be, won't you? Because yeah, you will, yeah, when you're handling it, it's always going to be yeah. being handled. Now, I'm going to give you one of those and ask you to show us how to use that while I get rid Certainly of this. Certainly will. All right. So what I do is let's move those out of the way. I just don't want to get them tangled in. I would normally take my skein. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take a fresh one. Go on then. Let's take this one. Now, this is out of the portrait. Yeah, this is the... What colour is this one? This is your peachy, peachy, cheek. peachy cheek, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to take both ends off. What I would normally do is, obviously, I've got um, the, the colour number and everything, so I will keep a hold of this. And you can see on these, I actually stick them You're on. very organised, aren't you? <laughs> Gosh! <laughs> I stick the, uh, the, the colour numbers and everything, so I remember where I got them from. Well, also, it means that you can order more when you run out. Well, yeah, absolutely. Normally, I would, if it's just um, a normal... Um, um, Grace or something, I'll just write the number on because obviously they're made of paper, so you can just write it straight on. So I dive into my thread, my skein comes like this, mm. and then I'll dive into the center, so opening it out, right? Making sure that all my threads are all the way round. And then I now you've done a hundred of these, so yeah, you know. I've done hundreds of these, yeah, <laughs> I've done many, many more in my time as well. So there we go. So I've popped it over my wrist. I like a bracelet. A little bit, yes. Okay. And then I've started to pull off one edge, made sure it's the kind of the outside edge as much as I can. Pop it on my, um, pop it onto my skein with my finger, my thumb holding it in place, and then I just start to wrap. So you don't have to hook it through one of the edge. You've got you've got two kind of. Yeah, so, I normally so leave those for the end ones right. so that I know where my end is as opposed to the beginning, so I'm not pulling from the centre, a bit like a ball of wool. You don't yes. want to pull from the centre, you want to pull from the outside. So what you can do then is you can unwrap round your arm as you go. Now, so see, you're we wrapping. used to... My grandmother used to use my hands like that yeah, for her for wool. Wolves. Yeah, same principle. So all you're doing is this helps and it stops it from getting knotted because it's unravelling ah. as you go. Just so simple, but and it means it doesn't get knotted up as you go along. Because if you just leave it down like this, what happens is that because of the thread, it gets caught up on itself oh, and starts it doing that, yeah, you've which got is that. you do not want that. When you've got it around your arm like this, it helps to, as I say, it helps to keep it all in place. Compare and contrast. <laughs> you got that. So this is this means you can sit and do it in front of the TV. This means you're going to be sat there unraveling it and miss all your telly programs. Oh, you don't want to miss your tele program. Your tele Something program. vital might be happening. So even now you can see this has started to pull a little bit tighter and get knotted up. So you can just go back around your wrist and pull it out. Because you've got it already unwrapped around. Perfect. It just means that you're not going to And you will end up with tangled. this by the time you've done 100 of them. Yeah. And let's face it, that's an evening's work, isn't it? Or yeah. two. Yeah, two actually. Yeah, two evenings in the hotel. Watching TV. There you go, done. And so you've got a hundred of the little um, skein holders, all organised beautifully in there. This is just four ninety five. Details down there for you. And that's how you organise your threads. Beautiful. That makes me happy. This done. makes me so happy. There Not going to lie. And you pop the end in there. And if you want the thread, all of that thread, it's fourteen ninety five. If you want to have the, the 100 thread pack, a great way to get started. Oh, yeah, definitely. Great yeah. way. Uh, then there you go. You've got all of those. Because uh, you always need embroidery thread. You know, especially our um, 
our animal making toy shows have really taken off. Yeah. You're going to want to put a nose on. Yeah. Or absolutely. embroider some eyes. I mean, or something we use like embroidery that. a lot. I mean, I use it a lot for doing applique. Yeah. So if I'm putting your blanket um, stitches yeah, around there. Yeah. And I'm doing a like bag that. next week that's got applique on the front of it. And we've used um, applique around the edge of the main letters and then in the center just to do some words. I use so. felt a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's great for that. Great for doing that. Felt. So seven ninety five gets you your portrait. That's the that was the the pink that we just used, um, and that had your greys and everything else. Can you believe that this hour has nearly finished? <laughs> I, had a I don't know where time goes. Uh, the epic alphabet has been the most popular this hour. Um, I, it's it's joyous, quite frankly. Yeah, I'm not Six ninety five for each of your transfer with you, and well, this is your epic. One PMP per day, don't forget. So you can stock up on as many items as you like and you're not going to be penalised for that at all. Uh, we just showed you one PMP. It gets added at midnight. I like to think of it as the Cinderella charge. That's great. So there we go. That's part of your epic. That's been done in the taffy pull. You're back with us in an hour. What are we doing in an hour? I am. What are we doing? We're talking about Insulbright. Ooh, and the many ways in which to use it. Dun, yep. dun, dun. Uh, so, stay with us for the next hour where we're uh, all about the uh, lampshade, I do mm. believe. So uh, but exciting. rather a lovely lampshade. <laughs> so, we will see, well, we'll see you after that. Yep. Next up is Victoria Peak. Join us in just one moment. Bye bye. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. If I were to describe the sewing quarter in five words, I would say educational, fun, friendly, chatty, and sewing. So the thing I'm most excited about the sewing quarter is getting to um, pass on my expertise to a whole new uh, group of people, a whole new generation maybe, or um, people that have um, given up sewing for a little while and they want to get back into it, I think that's the thing I'm most excited about, is passing on those skills. For me, quite a lot of preparation. I've been on board, not quite since the beginning, but almost. Um, we've been planning projects for months, um, trying to come up with really good, easy projects and some slightly more complicated ones, using really amazing fabrics and products to combined so that we've got the best of, of everything that we can offer. One fat quarter, definitely I would probably make a pin cushion because you always need one, I'm always losing them. I think I've asked here about five times where's the nearest pin cushion um, and also fat quarters are, are really versatile so you can you know cut them up and make something smaller or you know um, make it something bigger but obviously a fat quarter is, is quite small so I would say yeah pink cushion always need one. I would say I was thinking hard about this and what would think is that how friendly it is everyone who works here it's like a big family everyone's really friendly and kind all the presenters are gorgeous and friendly and it's it's hopefully it will make the sewing quarter somewhere that you want to come and spend time and feel like you're having a chat or you know being around friends and I think that's what will surprise most people about it. Now, it's all about home sweet home today. So we've embroidered some beautiful things for the home. Next up, hmm. Now this is a tricky one because when I first started decorating, making cushions, things like that, it was all fine. But when I then wanted to match other home decor items like my lamps, tricky, tricky. 
could run into a lot of expense trying to find a lampshade that's going to work, going to go with the right whoops, go with the right colours, um, all that sort of thing. We have got the answer for you today. And this is really the statement piece. This is your two-tiered lampshade. And this is a lampshade kit. So you've got the two different sizes. They tier together. You've got actually a, a sheet in there which diffuses the light. So it's going to give you a beautiful soft light as it comes through. In your choice of fabric, in your colours to go with your home. And this is the first time we've brought it to air for you. We're going to show you how easy it is to extend uh, the home decor that you manage to do at home. So if you are someone that loves to do your own cushions and things like that, but have struggled to do, you know, think of the expense of a lampshade. They can get super pricey, but now you can have the colors that you want, the material you want, the fabrics that you want. Maybe you want to just revamp a kid's room or something like that. Then lampshades are always the way. Uh, they just make a house a home in, in how you light your house. It's just beautiful. So getting the right lampshade in the right colors it's one of those small but important details in a home. So for $21.95, you can get the tiered lampshade kit, which gives you a 30 centimeter um, top one and a 20 centimeter one. And you've also got the diffusing sheet that then lies in the bottom there so that it's gonna give you a beautiful soft light within your home. JFDE50. Um, I'm gonna go and introduce you to our guest this hour because she's gonna show you how easy these are to do. Come and meet Victoria. Hello. Oh, haven't seen you for a while, have you? it's been a while. Hello, Good hello. to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Had you done one of these before we sent it to you? I had, actually. Yes, good. Yeah, they're super. They are, like you say, actually quite easy to do. They are. Um, I had bought a kit ages ago thinking, yes, I'll, I'll get do around to that. that. Um, and then I was nervous about using it, I'm not going to lie, because I thought, oh, you know, waste fabric, all the things that stop us, the, the self-doubt that yeah. stops us. And then um, I saw a friend do one. I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. Why have I, why have I not been doing this yeah. when it's that easy? Yeah, it is really easy. And it's so nice, like you said, to have something that matches your decor at home. Yes. It's lovely. Now, you can have these so that they hang from the top. You can have them as up lighters as well. We've got various different lampshades on. So if you are using a directional print, I would just yes. say when you get to a certain stage, decide which way round you want yes. it to be. To make sure I we get it the right way round. <laughs> might be really an cross to make an upside uh, down. lamp that I had wanted as a lamp. <laughs> so I had to make exactly. another one. It's fine. Uh, so where do we start? So today um, I'm showing you the lampshade kit for a 20 centimetre singular pendant light or a table light. Yes. So this is a 20 centimetre one, not the double one that we were looking okay. at a minute ago. So this is 9 95 um, We don't have a huge amount of stock on this, but we do have lots of varieties. So this is your 20 centimetre, perfect for a lamp, something like that. And, and once you've got a lamp base, you know, sometimes it's nice to just have oh, a change around. All the time. You know, sometimes they get a bit dusty, don't they? But a cat yeah. hair gets Or you want to on move it. the lamp from one room to another room and you've got the base and yeah. you just want to change the Absolutely. shade. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Then it's perfect for that. Where do we start? So these kits come with um, all of the hardware, essentially, that you need to make the lampshade. Yes. All you need is your own fabric. How much fabric do we need um, for this Well, one? this has got a half metre, but it depends on the size. But this, you, they provide you with the plastic that gives you the form. Right. So you need as much as yes. that takes. So the, okay. width, the width of the fabric, at least. Um, so the kit comes with the plastic, it comes with your metal hardware, uh, some double-sided tape, um, an extra ring, because some fittings are a little bit different, and a couple of tools. Um, I like to think of that as my plectrum. They are like giant, jaggedy mm. teeth, mm. shark-like plectrums. Uh, the instructions that come with the kits are amazing. They're really, really good. So if you do see it and you think, oh, I could give that a try, but I'm a bit worried about remembering, don't worry. You obviously watch back on YouTube because we load yep. all our episodes on. But on the instructions that come with these are really brilliant. They're colour photographs, step-by-step -step instructions. Yes. Super. So you won't get lost. And they are incredibly clear. So don't, you know, don't even be remotely worried. Really, really simple. They're I was fun. very impressed with the instructions. Yes, they're great. Super impressed. Absolutely so the brilliant. first place to start, pick your fabric. With some fabric. So we'll just lay out the fabric. And I'm just going to trim down... A little bit. Um, now, if you're using the first one that I did was on a stag head fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was I, I wanted to get my stag head 
right Central. through the centre. And you've got on here, you've got grids. Uh, so the, the actual, hang on, sorry, can oh, we yes. just... You can see on here, it's like sticky back plastic in a way, but you've got a grid on there so that you can absolutely place this where you want. Yes, and you've so got I to have my stag head running all the way through the middle. Yes, through the middle. And you've got to remember with, that when the, um, the shade is rolled, there's a seam at the back. So yes. you've got to think if there's an important part of the print, you want it in the middle yes. of the sheet. Yes. Perfect. Um, what are we using here? Um, I've just got some weights that I had at home, but you're more than welcome to use a tin of baked beans or whatever you've got Gold lying around. Bullion or something. You yeah, know, we have you, a lot of that know, at home. I just didn't want to pack it in the car. Uh, <laughs> uh, apparently but other beans are available. Other beans yeah. are available or, you know, pasta hoops or kidney beans. <laughs> Canelli, Canelli beans, is that a one? I'll get you. I don't know. Not, I'm not up on my beans. Hang on a minute. Oh, did you just say that, producer Paul? Oh, he makes a, a he makes a. What's that bean stew thing that you always have for lunch? For lunch, that's always oh, Colombian stew, and it's just full of beans. So uh, producer oh, Paul right, knows okay. his beans. Right, I am roughly cutting out. In order to make one of these um, lampshades, you do not need a rotary cutter and a mat. Okay. You can do it on your kitchen table. Excuse With me, a pair of scissors. Go in here? Yeah, no, James. Yes, a pair of scissors is fine. I'm just cutting this fabric down a little bit to make it a little less daunting in the way. This is your 20 centimetre. That's 20 centimetre in diameter um, across the top of the lampshade. So that's how big that's going to be. So that we've just reduced down in size. Now, what you've got is this is, like you say, like a sticky back plastic. You just pull off part of the sheet. Just going to lay that down. So it's little bit by little bit. That's the easiest way to do with it. this. I've, um, I'm weighting it down because it comes rolled in the kit. Yes. And that's fine because it rolls around as a lampshade. But if you want, you could just lay it out just for a little while just to get it a bit flatter. So you don't have to get your beans out your cupboard. No, just don't put your shopping away. Just do it on a day where you've got a, a supermarket delivery. <sighs> and just, you know... Just you don't... know what? I did a click and collect last night and we did got you? home and the girls, bless their little hearts, helped me pack the shopping away. Good girls. That's the most boring You'll never job. find it again. No, true. You won't know where anything is. <laughs> so true. <laughs> <laughs> so just pull that away gradually, slowly, slowly and push down. Give it a good press. I'm going to put those there so it doesn't all roll um, back on itself. I didn't do this with weights or tins of beans. Um, it was more difficult. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Have a bit you've, of a life on, it, yeah, on its yeah, own. Yeah, no, you've come up with a cracking way to just really make life easy. Yeah. Nine ninety five for this KJDE sixty nine. I'm going to leave it at that stage and go and look at some well, of the Well, shall fabric. I tell you what I'm going to do next? Yes, so, because that's a bit boring to watch. Right. I'm just going to trim off the excess around the edges. OK. Again, you can do that Absolutely with scissors. Absolutely flush. Absolutely flush all the way around. OK. Um, it's not totally important to get it exactly on on these edges. The closer, the better is, yeah. is obviously good. Uh, the more important edges are the shorter edges to get those right. Why is that? Uh, because when they overlap, you'll see the seam at the back of the... Ah. And in case it turns round, you want it to look nice and neat. Uh, again, you can cut those with scissors or your rotary cutter. OK, well, let's see you start that and then we'll okay. go and have a look at, um, at some of these fabrics. We've got, we've got spots for you today. It's all about the spots. Um, timeless classic. Ooh. I'm just going to cut, measure the, put the ruler up against. Again, you can do this freehand if you don't have a ruler. So this is your kit. This is what Victoria is using right now. This is your kit's 20 centimetre lampshade. So this can be your overhead light. This can be um, on, on um, your pendant. This could be... Um, bedside table. Yeah, bedside table, anything like that. Um, we, my mum and I had a, a wonderful friend called Jane and she always said that overhead lights were death to the soul. Oh, right, so, so accent lighting only. Yeah, so it was always lamps. She, and her house was just the most beautiful, so, like something out of House and Gardens. Um, and and it was like that. always lit with lamps and it was just beautiful, absolutely stunning. So, um, yeah, here we go. This is the way to do it. Lampshade kit, you can now have the colours you want, the fabrics that you want, that you can have it matching, you can have... Uh, this is it, you see. Kids' bedrooms. 
Perfect. You could match the curtains. You, with, or with the duvet, mm -hmm. or with whatever else you want to do and have the whole uh, whole shebang. Absolutely. Especially if you've made um, cushions and things for their room. Yeah, I think that's really nice. It's it's really, it, for me, it's important. Oh, look, um, see what happens. Yeah, oh, hello. Just wrap my arm yeah. in it. <laughs> It's a new kind of bangle, isn't it? It is. I yeah. can't believe you've never seen one. <laughs> yeah, chunky, chunky jewellery. Uh, so there we go, 9.95 for that, KJDE69. Um, I think this is quite an easy kit. It what is, it's think? great. It's, it's easy, it feels like it's really something quite fancy that you can do, but actually it's really easy and you get a great sense of achievement. Um, I have to say, that with the first lamp shade that I did, um, my mum, my mum will always spot anything new that I've done to the house in between <laughs> visits. So she'll always notice a new cushion that I've made or something like that. And she spots it. She's like, "Oh, I do like that." Oh, good. Um, and and many many a, an hour through my childhood was spent in uh, in various shops looking at lampshades and various antiques and this, that and the other. Um, and so when she says she likes something and know that she's being honest about it, um, and um, she thought it was going to be far more expensive. Um, firstly, because she thought I bought it, and secondly, because of the material, it looks stunning um, as that lampshade. And it was it was sizable. I went bigger than the 20 centimetre. We do have other other sizes for you today, um, but your 20 centimetre is 9.95. Um, but we've got 30 centimetre ones as well, and of course the pendant one, the double pendant one as well, that we've also got on the show. Let's have, here we go. So we've also, oh yeah, you see the tiered lampshade, which was the one that we started the show with, I think is, is a showstopper. It's great. It is, it's, it's a real focal point. It would look great in a living room. Yeah. Brilliant. Or if you've got quite a tall hallway. Yes. And you could have it coming down. Down the stairs. 20, yeah. $21.95 for this. JFDE50. But there we go. That's what it's looking like. That is your double. Uh, it's, it's a focal point. It's very definitely a mm, focal point. Or maybe over if you've got a big dining room, you want that over the dining room table. Yes, and it's that would got be nice. um it's got a sheet that sits in the bottom if you wish it to, which diffuses the light so you get that soft light. Gorgeous. Lovely. Very mm. nice. Oh yeah. There's a time and a place for stark lighting, and it was with the embroidery lamps earlier. <laughs> now it's yes, about that. You really it, needed but it, it is, there. isn't it? Yes. And then it's about making your home cozy and warm and, and just lovely to be in. Uh, this is your pendant, twenty-one ninety-five for your tiered lampshade. It's all in and it's all in the kit, you just add the fabric. Yes, it's all there. They've even got your little sharp tool. Help you we'll come to that shirt. in a minute. Let's show you the fabric that we've picked for you today. Now, of course, if you have fabric at home, then that's absolutely great. Um, but we thought that these just worked really well. So let's have a look at the pink down the bottom, because this is what you've been using. Spot on baby pink. Here we are. And this is from Macau. It is 100% cotton. Four ninety five per half a meter. Suddenly, home decor is very inexpensive. BXMY ninety six. All the spot on fabric that we've got on the show for you today is all just four ninety five per half a meter, which is just fab value for money. And it is one hundred percent cotton. It's really washable. It's really easy to use, um, and just brilliant. I'm, Victoria, I'm going to ask you to stop there so we can see exactly oh yes yeah, so don't worry there's two of them yep that's, that's fab. fine uh so there we go we've got this one this is your baby pink there and then we've got this blue across here very lovely colors through here and a nice finish to this fabric as well so this is your baby blue and again, if you're looking on the website, you might not see the colour match exactly. This is your baby blue. So actually, perfect if you're making... Um, well, for, for baby bedrooms. Nurseries, yes. Yeah, nurseries, things like that. If you just want to have uh, your classic polka dot, then go for this. 4 95 per half a metre. Let's have a look at the lilac next, which is under here. Just shimmy that along. So again, half a metre, 4 95 
it falls beautifully. Now we've made lampshades with these, but of course these are quality cotton, 100% cotton. So perfect for any of your craft projects and also for your dressmaking, it's got that drape. You're gonna be able to do that as well. This is gonna um, wash beautifully as well. If that's an important aspect, it certainly is in our house. Anything that comes in, we've gotta be able to wash it. Dogs, kids, everything, muddy paws, everything's gotta be able to be washed. That's your lilac there. And we've also got for you the m <laughs> Hang on. Which one's the m We haven't got... Let's go dark teal. Diddly dee, this is your dark teal here. So these are the two that we used on the tea lampshade. Let's have a look at the dark teal first. There you go. That's your dark teal. It's classy, this one. I like it. Oh, it's really smart. I like it a lot. That's four ninety five for that. Z E M Y fourteen, and you can just see. And I love the fact we've got the two tone lampshade there. So that is your dark teal on the top. Z E M Y fourteen four ninety five for a half meter there, and then tonally working beautifully. I'm going to guess is this light teal. I'll just call teal. Let's just go for teal. But you see, they work so well together. They're, they're tonally right. That's, that's the, the beauty. When you're buying from a selection of fabrics like this, the tones work. So $4.95 for this one. OAMY07. We've got greys as well on the show. We've got loads on the show for you. You decide where you're going and what you're going to do. Um, perfect. Right, there we go. Now... Back to what we're doing over here. Now, I saw you rip something off I did. Here. I ripped it off carelessly. Uh, I was supposed to do it. Don't panic. Didn't all go wrong. Uh, at the top of um, each side of the shade is a little tear-off strip. And this allows you to have some fabric uh, left over here that wraps around the top of the mm -hmm. frame. So it's all kiss-cut. Uh, so what just, does that mean? Um, cut. Just. 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 So it's and easy to... Rather than all the way all through. All the way through. Right. So you just fold it back on itself. And sometimes it cricks and sometimes it doesn't. Fold it back on itself and then you can pull that away. The one um, issue that you might have depending on your fabric is there'll be a little bit of fraying on the edges. So just don't just rip it off. Okay. Take it off bit by bit and just minimise the amount of threads that are coming off. You've got enough give um, with this. This is basically your seam. Yes. Yeah, if you like. Effectively. So don't panic if a few no, don't threads worry get if a few come off. And the £10 for lampshade, you then add the material. And this could be any material. My, um, my stag's head one was, um, was, quite, was almost like a... Um, an upholstery weight. Oh, yes. But it worked. It worked. Mm. So, you know, have a rifle through our website, find a material that you absolutely love, then uh, then do. Now, I know that some of you have, have already... We, I think we brought these to wear in our second week. Yes, quite possibly. I do believe. And, uh, and a lot of you got them then and have made them. So if you've already got them, you've already made them, send your photos in. We would love to see them. Oh, that would be fab. What are you doing? I'm just taking off some of the little hairy bits okay. that are just a bit in the way. Uh, now, if you'd like to get in touch, here's how you do so. On the website, which is sewingquarter.com, that's, you go to, click on view live, and then underneath us, there's a little box, which is message the studio. And then if you just, that's our web chat. So when we say on web chat, that's what we mean there. But if you've got a lot to say, there is a character <laughs> restriction. It's a bit like uh, when you tweet something. Yes. There's a Limited. certain number of characters you can message the studio with. Then email if you've got a lot to say. And that's studio at sewingquarter.com. Then underneath that is the shopping list. So that's everything that we've shown on the shows today. So if you're after a hoop, if you're after some of those beautiful skeins, it's all on there. Or if you just need this spotty fabric to do your lampshades in, then all it's all there. on there. So we've trimmed. Yes, we've trimmed. What do we do now, next? Now, included in the box is a tape. This a reel of tape. 
I'm, I'm going to be honest with this super sticky. <laughs> I've used this a lot before in, uh, in former jobs and, and I use it as a crafter a lot. It is super sticky. It is really sticky. And I made the mistake of once putting pictures up on the wall. Ooh. Yeah, I had to redecorate. <laughs> it is that super sticky. It is seriously sticky. sticky. Stick with caution. Yes. But you do have lots left over, which is great. Yes, there's loads. Mm. Absolutely loads. Uh, so what we need is one strip that goes along one of the short edges on the inside, and that's for joining later. Right. So I'll just place that. Have For this project, have a pair of craft scissors. And I have been reliably informed that these are craft scissors suitable for chopping non-fabrics. OK. Stop me now if that's wrong. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't I'm get about them to, to you. cut. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> right, there we go. Done. And just give that a press down to make sure that it's in place. And that's okay. that for the time being. We then move on to preparing the two hoops. Yes. The top and the bottom. Or the bottom and the top. Now. Depending on which way your lamp goes. If you have a directional fabric, you need to think about yes which one goes at the top and what type of lampshade you want yes so whether you want a mm -hmm. you have to imagine that it's wrapped but whether you want a hanging pendant yes or whether maybe you have a side table lamp yes so and decide and so, what the purpose yeah. is first then look at your fabric and decide whether it's directional. now obviously with this it's a polka dot so it doesn't matter so much um but this you'll see on the instructions here so far we have Put it on our material. We have peeled back. Um, and then we've peeled off that bottom. And here we are down here, cutting away the excess fabric there. And you then can use a craft knife. I think they suggest in here that you can use a craft knife. Yeah, absolutely. So craft knife, scissors, rotary cutter. Whatever you're cutting whatever you have. with. That's the snap back uh, that we've just done to then reveal. Da, 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 there. Sue's messaged in. Yeah, she bought one of these kits. I know exactly which mm. Sue that is. Um, <laughs> yeah, she says they're so simple and they look amazing when they're done. Yeah. But it is is—it's one of those things that once you, once you try it, and it did take someone seeing someone using this kit for me to go, why, do, why I was I waiting? That. Why was I waiting? Yeah. So the next stage is using some more of your tape. Yes. And you need to apply the tape to the outside edges of the hoops, not the top or bottom, but the actual very outside edge. Yes. So if you take out some of the tape. Take your time with this bit. Yeah, I find it's easier if you rotate it out, pull out a length and lay it down. And that's the neck, isn't it? Pull out a length, lay it down. Yeah, give it a press. So for under £10, you can be decorating your own home, your own lampshade. Look how much lampshades retail for. It's mm, frightening, really frightening. And if you're like me and you've got a lamp base that you absolutely love, but then you change, because let's face it, I make a lot of cushions, and I change. <laughs> <laughs> nice to coordinate. Well, yeah, absolutely. But it is, and it's a very inexpensive way in which to do that. Maybe you want to decorate a bedroom, have a change of scene. Um, because we rent, we can't paint the walls. Oh, it's so, so annoying, actually, isn't well, it? Yeah, but it's, it's a great excuse to get those fabrics in and get the colour in by having the fabrics in there. Mind you, we might be redecorating after I flooded the bathroom this morning. <gasps> Oh dear. The iron outside was flooding this morning. Oh no. Oh flood, 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 flood everywhere. Um, Wendy's messaged in. Hello, Wendy. She says, thank you very much for getting her back into sewing. Uh, oh. Thank you, Wendy, for watching. Um, so when we've got that tape all the so way around. All the way around. And then you need to press the edges in because that was flat. You go mm -hmm. around once you've, you're happy that you've got it flat all the way around. Try not to overlap too much where you started because then it's really difficult to pull the backing right off. Because the tape is actually clear, it's not this red pinky colour. It's that, that's, that's just the backing. Yeah, and that's so you can see where, where you're pulling see it off from. Going. But you see, what this is doing um, is covering as much of that round as you can. Because yes. you're gonna, that's where the fabric is gonna lose Yes, that's around. where your seam allowance, if you like, sticks to. So that's why it's important to get that centre part of that tape on the very edge because then you've got tape 
as covering as much of it in the important places yeah, as you can. Exactly, you don't want to miss it. But that's bits. actually the most technical part, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really? it's just being precise. And the instructions are very clear. Yes. Just follow them to the letter. Once you've done one, you can do any of the sizes. So let me give you all the different options for you. I love the tiered. It's nice, isn't it's it? It's stunning. Really mm. stunning. For twenty one ninety five. You think how much that is going to cost you in the shop? Awful lot. I'm always surprised at how expensive lampshades are I'm in the shops. I'm horrified. Always surprised. Uh, Twenty-one ninety-five for this JFDE fifty. Now this could be um, on a beautiful lamp base if you've got a standard lamp. Mm. Could be gorgeous. Yeah, that would be This could nice. be um, if you've got sort of high ceilings as you go up the stairs and you want to have a um, or in a hallway or something like that. Gorgeous. Or over your or over your dining room table because it's got that. It's got a plastic sheet that diffuses light should you wish to use it that you can place in the in the base which is brilliant yeah it's nice they've thought of it yeah they have they really have uh, so these of course are always very popular 21.95 jfde 50 for your tiered lampshade kit full instructions as we've seen so if i just show you on the instructions where we've got to here we're down the bottom on the first page so this is for the 20 centimeter one but the the bait is that once you can do one, you can do any of these. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's exactly the same skill. skill. So there we've put the red tape on. Victoria's just done that bit where she just squidges it all the way around. And I do believe she will be any second now removing, removing. the red That's tape. That's key. It don't take the tape off the first one until you've put tape on the until second you're one. Until you're ready. Because it is, it is so sticky. It'll attract flying flies and all sorts. And cat fur. And cat fur and dog fur and everything else. Actually, that might be good for the summer, is just to hang some of this. Catch the flies. Fly catcher. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, do, do do both first with the tape. Yes. But and again, it's if, all in the instructions. If you do make a mistake, they've been generous with the tape. They've been very generous. So there's plenty left. That's now in my crafty stash, not going to lie. Love it. In your pocket. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> saw that. <laughs> okay, so now we apply the hoops to the fabric. Right. Mm -hmm. You roll away from yourself. Why is that important? I think it's just getting the angle right so that you can see what you're doing because you need to make sure that you're rolling straight. Okay. And that you don't go wonky so you've got a slightly better view. Um, I'm just trying to think when I made the larger ones. Yeah, I did the same thing. I started from the back mm. and rolled over. But by the time I got to the other side, I was sort of looking from the other way just to make sure I was straight. You're starting um, at the... Let me think this through. Yes, you're starting at the end that doesn't have the tape on the short end. Right. And then we'll Why work is that towards important? that. Because when you roll together, that will come over and stick onto uh, the top. Okay, right. Just have to think that through. Right, what type of lamp would you like to make? Oh, uh, let me think. I think that we should have this as a table lamp. A table lamp. Yes. So with a table lamp, you would probably have it like that. Yes, yes, you would, because you'd have the bulb coming up. Yeah. Mm hmm So that one will go on this side, and then this one will go on this side. So if this was a directional print, it would be, that would be down and that would be up on your yes. directional print. And that really is, is the only, the Brain only thing to, yeah, part. is just to make sure that you've got it the right way around. Mm. Go and have a look at a, at a lamp and make yes. sure that you've got it the right way around. I didn't and we ended up with a lovely overhead. <laughs> Produce Paul's always been in the flat packs and these are perfect for him. Oh um, the instructions that you get for this are... <laughs> So superior to any flat pack that Produce Paul oh, has yes. ever used. They're incredible in comparison. And also, the, the leftover bits that you get are meant to be. So you will get some tape left over. It's not like when I make yes, something and you go, from... What on earth is that? Why have I got three bolts left? Surely this is going to just fall apart. <laughs> oh, no, you will, you will get that left over. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> but it is. The instructions are super simple, super easy. And I've got, brought the instructions for the double kit as well, um, because they're just as useful, just as good. So, because the construction technique is ever so slightly different to one shade than the other, because the fittings are different. Right. The bottom shade in uh, the double kit is just two rings, and right. the one in the top has got another one with. It's got 
So that's one your, like this. And that's then it's your got, light fitting for the top one. And it's got one with hooks and the hooks hook the bottom shade. So you do, it's got slightly different instructions, but it's still exactly the same technique. It's just which bits you add to which shade. Brilliant. Brilliant. Find the join. 2195. Love this. How much would you pay for something like that in the shop? Well, do you know what? I was trying to think about that because it's... I remember buying a large drum shade that was similar to the... That large Which one. Just the top sure it one. cost me sixty pounds. I wouldn't be surprised. They are. It's always so much more than you think it's going to be. Mm. But you think so for this? Okay, yeah. Producer Paul's got lamp shades are well expensive. <laughs> yeah. They are. That's why we're doing this show, <laughs> so that you can have the beautiful lamp shades that you've always dreamed of at a fraction of the cost. Well, you think? Okay, so today's lamp shade, this one, twenty centimeter one, mm -hmm. uses less than half a meter of fabric. I mean, like way less yes. than half a meter yeah. of fabric. You're going to be able to do a cushion to match. Oh yes. Um, and so we're looking at under ten pounds for the actual frame, and under five pounds for a half a meter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for under fifteen pounds, you've got enough for a cushion and a matching lampshade. Yeah. Boom, job done. And totally as you want it. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Right. I'm now stuck to some rings. Yes. Right. The rings themselves have to be adhered to the plastic, not to the fabric. Oh, okay. Right. So they, the edge of the ring has to sit in line with the top of okay. the of the plastic. So I'm just going to position those. Bring these back this way a little bit. Do you want a hand? Actually, I'll put that one that way and I'll put this on and then I'll get you to stick yourself to it. Okay. This is, you know, sometimes you, you do need another pair of hands. Although I managed to make those double shades all on my own. Did you? Yep. Good work. Even though they're big, it is possible. Oh yeah, because it just stands. They just stand just long enough for you to But because you're sticking this onto um, onto the actual base, onto the plastic PVC type stuff, you can reposition. So don't worry if if you go in and you get it a bit wonky to start off with. You can reposition it because you're not going straight onto the fabric. You're going onto the plastic, and that's the joy of it. Lots of multi buyers this morning. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. It's sticky. It's really <laughs> sticky. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Thank you for making your home beautiful. And this is the, this is the difference, isn't it, between a house and a home? Mm -hmm. It's these little finishing touches. Unique. Um You look like you're about to plate spin Ready to or roll. something. <laughs> that looks really difficult, plate spinning. I know. <laughs> but at so, least, you know. Right. We now these roll. No, these will just slide out of the way. Oh, will they? Um, so you could put your tin of vegetables on their side <laughs> it could just roll with oh, you yeah, good we could just roll along We're rolling. so as you go it would help if i was at least three inches taller for this table uh, just Should make a little, sure little something to stand yeah, on a little stand uh, just roll and just watch i'm watching where the hoops are hitting the plastic rolling both hoops at the same time making sure that i'm not suddenly going off at a skew if angle but if you do you can just come back and reposition so it's not the end of the world. Just Once you get time, going, then it's you, fine. You generally tend to be okay. There we go. It's gone very quiet. I know, it's the concentration. <laughs> We're all concentrating. <laughs> but under 10 pounds. It's not like I'm doing a wildlife show. It is. <laughs> and here we can see. The lesser spotted Victoria creating her very own lampshade. Out of pink spot black fabric. Yes. Which is four ninety five <laughs> per half a metre, which in anyone's book is excellent oh, value. Amazing deal. Beautifully right. done. So that's brought you round to um, where you've started. Yes. Now this is where you then remove Yes, so That's if you're happy with the placement, remove that happy. pink tape. And you can just sort of visually check. Don't wrap the fabric yet. You can just visually check that you've got everything in the right place. Mm. Where have that seam gone here? It looks amazing. It really just does. Going to, and this can be a bit tricky to get off. A fingernail always helps a bit. 
It's one of those things that once you've done it, you're going to feel so proud of yourself mm. for doing it. This is a sense of achievement job. And like I say, you know, when my mum came around, she couldn't believe that I'd... She, and she, she, word for word, I can't believe all these years I've paid so much for lampshades when I could have made yeah, them. could have made them yourself. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. fabulous but kits. It's the, it's the truth of it, isn't it? And, you know, I don't know about you, but lampshades, once they get a bit dusty or what have you, especially if it's fabric... I lose the love for mm. them. And if they're in a window, they can get a bit damaged by the sun yep. and not so nice. Revamp your house. Get it looking absolutely gorgeous in the fabrics that you want, the colourways that you want. And also think of, well, you've got kids, haven't you? Yes. And as they grow, their tastes change they do. quite a lot. So the dinosaur lamp... <laughs> Not that they appropriate. have when they're three or four by the time that they're sort of eight or nine they might have grown out of mm. easy way to just update upgrade that room no exactly producer, although my eight year old she's not having it i've said oh let's change the pictures in your room no no I said, really oh, something a bit older you're eight nearly not no no i said i'm gonna do it when you go to school and she cries <laughs> oh no your children cry. Oh, well, okay, we'll leave it I'm going it to is. do something nice for you and you're going to you're enjoy going it. going to like it. <laughs> right, so I've, I've taken that, um, that strip out and just from the inside, probably, it's easier because you've got one side that's got nothing and the other side that's got the fitting. Yes. If you go in from the side that doesn't have the fitting and just give that a press. The instructions suggest using a little roller like you did when you did lino printing when oh, you were yeah, yeah. at school. One of those. If not, just give it a good hard press. Yeah. Just to make sure that that's properly attached. Now we need to wrap the fabric round. Yes. So make sure you do it relatively tight. Don't be loose with it because you want a nice, neat finish. So wrap it round and tuck it in as much as you can. Um, it will look a little bit on the messy side, but that's what the tool is for. That's okay. In a minute. Yeah. So whilst you go round there, um, of course, you can, once you've made it, you can accessorise it. Yes, you can. So um, whether you're... Oh, the Rick Rack is back. Let me show you the Rick Rack. Um, I'm not allowed to open these. It's 25 metres wow. into these Rick Racks. We had these on a show the other day. They absolutely flew uh, because we thought about bunting as yes. well to do and with these. This is nice because it's big Rick Rack. It and is. that's not quite so easy to find. And it's, But it is easier to sew with, that's yeah. for sure. Yes. So um, you've got lilac there for you. I don't think that you've seen the lilac one before, but what we're looking at here is 25 metres. Mm. You can Rick Rack everything 1295 s k g q 19 um as far as i'm concerned fabulous for bunting once you start rick racking you'll never look back no it's one of those classics isn't it rick rack doesn't go out of fashion no i made a, meters, yeah. like a picnic blanket for the girls for their dolls tea parties nice. and i put that all the way around the edges needed oh. loads well that's the thing isn't it once you start and because this is the wider one then we're looking more at home decor items of course yes you can you can put it on um on dresses or what have you if you wish we had that on a show the other day mm -hmm. with a nice sort of 60s inspired tunic perfect but of course this is great for your home decor and being that larger size so you could put this around the rim of your lampshade yeah that would look nice we had craft glue on the show yesterday if you wanted to glue it on <laughs> yeah that would make it really quick yeah that's really your liner easy uh, let me show you the white or is this called the natural one which one oh, no it's white here you go this is your white essential brick rack again 25 meters mm. fab 12.95 so, you see, you could be decorating your cushions that you've got out of that half yes. metre of fabric that you've got left over after making your lampshade. Maybe, I, oh, do you know what? If you've got, um, there's pink. And again, each of these are 12 95 mm, um, That's good. So you could do a contrast. You could have done the Rick Rack round your lampshade in white. And that's nice because all the spots the are in white. Yeah. So that catches really nicely. Or if you want the pink. Hang on, let's just... Zip. My, yeah, then you could do that. Made. Lovely. And then the, the blue, which is going to go with the baby blue spots that we've got on the show for you. I think blue is quite a nice accent for pink. Yeah. Because sometimes the traditional small girl's bedroom is sugary pink, but actually blue is really nice. It's nice, isn't nice it? It just too. levels it out. Yeah. They do say that at, at every point, most children will have pink as their favourite colour. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls. Yeah, mine have been through it. Yeah. And then they go the other way. Don't like pink. <laughs> Don't like pink. Boys used to wear pink as a fact. Mm. Fact. Don't know when it all changed, but there we go. 
There you go. <laughs> Back in the day when boys had curly hair Aww. and pink Sweet. and wore dresses. I love little boys with little wispy curly hair. <laughs> Yeah, apart from my son has so much blonde hair, he oh, looks really? like Boris Johnson. Oh, it's, it's, it's a look. <laughs> Bless his little heart. Bless him. He's having a haircut soon. Uh, so your 20 centimetre drum lampshade kit is 9 95 What a great way to update your room. Yeah. Good and stuff. also, you know, I, I don't think it's ever too young to get kids involved. You know, no. they, they can help make their own lampshade if they wish. And then they've invested in their room. Yes. See, that's where I went wrong. Um, I just told Charlotte, this is what I think maybe I needed to involve her a bit more. Maybe you could get her to make her own lampshade for yeah. her room and she could pick her colour. Oh, she would love that. Pick her material. Yeah. Then you can make some cushions and stuff together. See, I think this would be a really great birthday party idea for slightly older children that like oh. to do crafty things, you could buy a selection. So say you've got half a dozen children coming round, instead of paying to go to the cinema or whatever, actually for £10 and some fabric to sit and they can all make Under something and be creative. Pounds. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea for a party. You can decorate with your rick-rack or pom-poms. Have you seen the pom-poms? Love the pom-poms. Uh, we've got an option of a grey or a white. Oh, grey, grey, grey. Yeah, oh, grey and the pink. Mm. Oh, that would be lovely. And then you could just have that round the base. Yeah. And then round the edge of your cushion as well, couldn't you? 2 95 and you're getting two metres of that. So that's going to go around there. I'm not allowed to open it all up. Just but peek a little bit out. There, you can just see. They're very cute. Yeah. Really sweet and a lovely different accent. It changes the feel of the lamp completely. Yeah, it does. We've got tassel makers as well coming up at yes, 11. We're you doing can tassel, tassel up your later. lamp. Yes, add some tassels off the bottom. Um, so that's your grey, and then you've got your white. And again, because you've got the white spots, all of our um, polka dot fabrics today have all got the white spot. So that's perfect. Perfect accent. Lovely. Now, how do we finish off this lampshade? Right, uh, the other half of folding in the seam allowances, you've got, on this half of the lamp, you've got the struts. Mm -hmm. So you just need to put in a little snip on, uh, on the edge where it meets mm. on here, which we can just see in here. So I'm just going to put in a little cut, and that allows you to wrap around... Uh, where those are and that's important for the double lampshade kit as well because you've got hooks and the struts as well okay just a little snip and then you can do the same thing just wrap the fabric round and you can see there it just goes either side how it just goes round that strut and then the rest of it like I say will tidy up in a minute and actually if you're anything like me and you end up going and looking at all of your lampshades to see the finish on those how they're done. Yeah, it's this is it. The there's, no, there's no other secret it's to a, a lampshade. A little bit this of an how it is. aha moment. Of, yeah. Oh, right. That's how they make it. Well, I, I had an uh, aha moment, and then I, I had a, a cross moment <laughs> that I'd spent so much on lampshades all these years, and not even got exactly what I wanted. Yeah. But, so now you can get the size you want, the colours you want, the fabric that you want. Um, and I love your idea of having a, a kids' party where they get to make their own lampshades, yeah. take home love that as a kid it's because other, actually you can um you can pay a lot of money just for for goodie bags for them to take home but when they're I actually know. taking home something that is an investment in their own room mm. brilliant and of course it's not just single tiered today we've bought you for the first time double tiered wait hold that thought. Wait hold here, that like thought this. i want I to show move, you the double one promise. because i do think that this is stunning um we've done it in the dark teal and also the the normal teal absolutely beautiful but we've also got for you the darker gray and the light gray which would work really really gorgeously as well so this is when we say about the double it's a shame we couldn't get a light in it but you the, you've got um in fact i'm just going to take this out from Anyone underneath got a torch uh, yeah <laughs> i did ask about a torch i don't know if i can squidge this out here we go this is what I keep saying, is you've got to diffuse it in the bottom, should you wish to use it. Now, what this means is that it's going to soften the light that's coming through. Uh, so you've got that as, a, as an additional option, should you wish to use it, which is just lovely. And it just literally slots in like that. And it's in. 
How easy is that? So the very easy, well thought out. So you've got up here, this is your 30 centimeter, then you've got your 20 centimeter and they work together. This whole kit is there to work together. So don't buy like the separate 30 centimeter and the separate 20 centimeter and think they're a kit. They're not, this comes kitted together as a tiered lampshade. The details on your screen there, JFDE50, 21.95. Now, we've also got, we've worked with the 20 centimetre on its own. This is the 30 centimetre kit on its own as well. We've got 20 centimetres ones, we've got 30 centimetre ones. It's entirely up to you. So, but this is the size of your 30 centimetre. You can see it's a good sizable one. If, you, if you've got some lovely big lamp shades, then this is perfect. 14.95, again, you're still looking with your, with your half a metre of fabric at under 20 pounds for personalised lampshade. It's the colours that you want. This is, this is a good size. This is your 30 centimetre diameter. It's this size here. So you can see, and that's the sort that you pay an awful lot of money for in the shops. VTDE61, if you're lucky, it might go with your house. Now you can definitely know that it's gonna go with your home decor. 14.95, but let, Everything comes in the pack. <laughs> it's all there. Sounds like it's broken, but it's it not. It's, really it's not. not. It's Don't fine. Panic. Um, now, I started talking to you about fabric. Um, we looked at the teals earlier, um, and I just wanted to show you here the greys, because we've got two greys then are going to work beautifully if you're doing the tiered lampshades. Greys are one of those colours that blend with so much. So... Here we go. These are your two greys. Do take a look on the website. They'll be on there for you. But again, um, these are 4 95 per half a metre. Should we take a look at that pink again? Lots of you going for the pink and lots going for that blue as well. Um, let's, let's get these. Let's, See, the pink is, would look nice with the lilac. Did you call that a lilac as well if you're doing the double? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Or maybe if you've got kids that are sharing a room, you do one blue, one pink mm. and work it that way. Twins, boy and girl twins. Could you imagine? You could do the lights like that. Here we go. But this is a metre of fabric. Half a metre, we reckon you would get the 20 centimetre lamp and a cushion out of it. 495 BXMY96. This is your spot on baby pink. This is what we've used this hour. And of course it's going to work with the pink and the blue and the white rick rack that we've got on the show and also the pom-pom attachments as well. So 495 there. You could match that with the greys. It'd be lovely. Um, actually it works with the teal as well, doesn't it? Beautiful. Because they're all from the same collection, tonally they, they really work. Should we look at that blue? Blue, 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 baby blue, beautiful. So, here we are. This is your baby blue. These aren't sickly colors, are they? You know, sometimes your, your baby colors can be a little bit sickly, but these aren't, they're a beautiful tone. Um, and a classic with that polka dot, 495 ICMY26. If you saw the first hour and you saw Sammy hooping up, this was the fabric that she was hooping oh, up she? with, was with the polka dot. Uh, from Macau, 100% cotton. And of course, you know, we've done this with lampshades today, but because this is your 100% cotton, maybe use it for bag making. This would make lovely linings for bags, wouldn't it, as well? And uh, also, um, if you want to make any dresses or anything like that, then you've got that as option as well. And it's got a beautiful finish on it. Right, now, Victoria, talking of finishes, last bit. So this is what we're going to use next is the little tool that they've provided you with. Mm -hmm. One edge is serrated. It's got little tigery teeth on the top. And then you've got two smooth sides. This is just made out of exactly the same material that the lampshade's made out of. Mm -hmm. You are going to use the serrated edge first. And that's to poke in all of the um, loose bits of fabric. So this is where it doesn't matter if your fabric frayed slightly because you're gonna tuck it in. I'm gonna push it in, all the way in. Ooh. So a quick warning for you, we are running low on stock of the 20 centimeter lampshade. So if you have that in your basket and you're desperate for it, then um, it's under 10 pounds, it's 9.95. The code is J, uh, KJDE69. Give us a quick call, 0800 112 4433, just to secure it. Make sure that you're, uh, you're not missing out on any of this. So the teeth, they grip and push that fabric just down. 
And again, this is um, this is where you had that tape. This is why the tape goes round. Yes, because you're you're squashing that excess fabric between. You can see how it's just poking in a little bit more between the shade and the ring. Just and just in. take your time. It's quite satisfying actually doing yeah, this. It's bit. quite good. You see it all disappearing. And neatening You've up. Just got to remember to move your hand around. And pop it in. And then you use the other end of the tool to just smooth it. And this is, you've got to use slightly more brute force to use this straight edge. And you slide that underneath. And that is okay. where it gets up any wispy bits, isn't it? Yeah, that hides any wispy bits. You've just got to be quite firm. I'm going to take my bracelet off because I keep catching keep myself catching on, the on the inside of the lampshade. And, throw it in, and, and there it goes. So this is something that you can do with the kids, with the grandkids. Um, get them interested, get them involved. Uh, but of course, this is also something you can equally just do yourself very easily. Just one afternoon, uh, you can have whole new lampshades around your house. Should you wish a lot of you multi-buying on these? If you are after uh, the 20 centimeter one, please do check out your baskets because we're running very low on stock of that. It's 9.95 um, KJDE69. We've got a 30 centimeter one for you as well today. And of course, the tiered lampshade shade as well and the larger um, ones really don't take any longer i mean the double tiered one does because you're making two mm. but just because it's 30 centimeters it doesn't really take much longer yeah. than the 20 centimeter one this is the this is your tiered one here so this is 21.95 but you're getting 30 centimeter and a 20 centimeter really lovely okay and this okay so it's telling you what size your panels need to be so you need 97 centimetres, okay, let's do it in millimetres, 97, 970 millimetres by 255 millimetres. So basically, under a metre of, oh yeah, if you've got a metre width, width, it's the width, then, it's, uh, then you're what, good. So what was the widest part on that one? Uh, so you've got 970, Okay. so that's going to go across the width, um, and then 255 millimetres, so that's 25 and a half centimetres, so that's a quarter of a metre of fabric, so you're going to have half left again. Yeah. And then for the bottom panel, for your 20 centimetre lampshade, so this is also going to apply if you've bought them individually, um, then 645 millimetres, so... Yeah, that's going to go about half the way across your selvage to selvage width of fabric and 22 centimetres depth. So you've still got oodles of fabric from a half metre and your half metre is just 4 95 and all of those polka dots that we've had on the show today. So that's how much fabric you need for each of those. Um, and this is your two-tiered kit that we've got in the studio that you've seen today really stunning 21.95 jfde 50 love it how are you getting on there victoria yeah just moving on to the other side which is a bit easier because you've not got this in the way so oh, you you're can just always your working in. against that with the other i find it easier to come in from the opposite side in the larger lampshades you can work from yes. the front but this one's smaller so you just poke your hand in through the back it's just so satisfying. It is. Just picking all the bits in. And you will. You'll be going around your house going, I can't believe I paid for that. I paid that for that, that for that. And you can just be doing your own. Um, and in any of the materials, of course, check out our website. We do sell so many materials by the half metre. I mean, maybe go for a patent and then use one of the planes if you're using the tiered. Yes, that that's would another be nice way as well. of working with it as well. But it really is just a, a lovely afternoon. Spent, I mean, we've done this one start to finish in under an hour. Yeah, I was going to say it's not even an afternoon. Depends how many you're doing. If you're doing the whole house, oh, you know, I am doing the whole house. Yeah, that's why, it, that's why it's an afternoon. <laughs> that's why. Oh, uh, I'm just going to come around and grab because a lot of you have been asking about this as well. This is our Fiskars rotary cutter. This is the floral design, perfect for Mother's Day. <gasps> it's soon. 13.95 for you on the rotary cutter. TKGQ12. And this is the flowery rotary cutter. It's a good price, that, isn't it? It's really yeah, it good is price good. for that. It's easy to use as well. Right or left-handed. And as soon as you... you know, I'm just trying to show that. Push that down, pull back, and that reveals the blade. 
it's that easy. Safety, of course, paramount with your um, rotary cutters. So perfect Mother's Day present, that one. Ever so pretty. And you're always going to know it's yours. TKGQ19. Might not be delivered by Mother's Day. There is an express delivery, though, isn't it? So you get it within... And what day are we today? We are Thursday today. Oh, Thursday. Thursday? Oh, no, you might not get it for Sunday. Mm. But it depends if you're seeing your mum actually on Mother's Day. True. Not seeing my mum. But then she lives a long way away. Is your mum in Australia? Yes, mum's in Australia. For the first time actually today, we've heard the odd a little Australian. Oh, really? Is it Normally creeping I wouldn't, out? Mm. wouldn't know that you were Australian. Can't hide it. <sighs> How long have you been in the UK? Quite a long time, actually. Can't shake it. I've been in the UK longer than I have been in Australia. Oh, really? Can't shake it. Yay. It's in. That's it. That is your lampshade done. 20 centimetres. That's a lovely show. That's a lovely size. Bedside lamps. Anything like that. And look how even on that seam, look how neat that is. Really, really lovely. And you can see how by poking it in with all the teeth, it just gets rid of all those little wispy bits on the inside. There you go. Very lovely and neat. Let me show you these instructions because if you've just joined us and gone, well, that's lovely, but I'm not sure that I can manage it. You absolutely can. These are how simple the instructions are. All photographic, step by step, very basic, very easy. And oodles of them, which is just perfect. So you need your covering of choice, a clean flat work surface and a sharp knife or scissors. Yes, like I say, I used the rotary cutter today, but you can just use a pair of scissors. I did mine on the kitchen table. Done. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's wherever you've got the space just to roll it through. Um, I loved your idea of, of tins of beans tins or of, whatever. Yeah. Chicken and soup. then off it goes. <laughs> now, you're back in an hour, aren't you? Yes, I am back in an hour. Excellent. What are you bringing us? We are looking at the Clover Tassel Maker. Oh. <gasps> tassels. Yes. Oh, a range amazing. of tassels around the bottom would look good. So stay with us for that. Victoria's going to be back at 11. It's Sammy Claridge up next. See you in just one moment. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. The Sewing Quarter is a new inspirational sewing and quilting channel here to help educate our viewers with some of the best designers in the business. We hope to bring you some exciting demonstrations with some of the top industry experts. We're part of the Immediate Media family. Immediate Media is a fast-growing multi-platform company who operates some of the most loved brands across the UK. Our brands range from our first TV shopping channel adventure with Jewelry Maker to several successful magazines such as Simply Sewing, Radio Times, BBC Good Food and many more. We've been working incredibly hard to set up and bring you our new exciting channel and we hope that we can help inspire you with new ideas and projects. At the Sewing Quarter, we want to bring our viewers the best and most exciting opportunities to learn and expand your knowledge. To help do this, we will be bringing in some of the leading industry experts in sewing and quilting to help guide our viewers along the way. Such as Jennifer Taylor, Samantha Claridge, Lucy Brennan, Joe Carter. Angela Atwood, Karen Lewis, Rebecca Reed, and finally, Jenny Fox Proverbs, who is the senior editor of Today's Quilter and Love Patchwork and Quilting magazines.
Well, welcome back. Now, we are past that spring equinox, which means thoughts of picnics and um, outdoor theatre and um, just any sort of outside event starts to occur to us. Picnic by the river, that's what we like. So here we go. We've got for you this hour your insul bright. We're going to be having a look at all the different ways in which you can use this. This has been an absolute star product for us. Um, it's been one of those things that so many of you have brought and we want you to get the best out of this product. So we want to show you some ideas on how to use this because you can use this from everything from lunch boxes um, to... Um, um, well, anything really. If you want to do kitchen gloves, you can do that. Pot holders, all that sort of stuff. But we're going to show you how to use this to its best advantage. Um, it's, it says on the back here, you can use it for uh, gifts, pot holders, oven mitts, casserole covers, um, all of your fun inspirational products you've got that for. So we're going to show you how to do this. Now, the way that this works, you, you basically use it like a wadding. But inside of it, um, you've got a reflective coating through there. So you've got sort of a wadding on either side and then this reflective coating. So that's gonna keep warmth in or it's going to keep the cool in. So if you, cold stuff, it keeps cold, warm stuff, it keeps warm. And for 5 95 you're getting a huge amount. You are getting 43 inches by a yard in centimetres. That's 1.14 uh, metres by 91.4 centimetres. Okay, so you're getting a huge amount in there. So whether this is going to be for place settings, whether this is going to be for oven mitts, entirely up to you. Last time we bought this on, um, absolutely flew. And, um, and do you know what? So many of you messaged and go, I can't believe the price of that. $5.95, I know, I know. So whether you've, you're, um, you're keeping hot things hot or you're doing your kids' lunch boxes and keeping it cold, then absolutely perfect for that. So if you're off for a picnic, if you're going to a festival, maybe you're going to proms in the park, something like that, you could even make your picnic blanket out of this. Maybe you're a camper and you like to go camping, then keep all of those things absolutely warm or cold, whichever way around it is that you want them, and this is the perfect product for you. 595 YQRW 79, always very popular when we bring it to air, and because you're getting such a huge amount, um, really is incredible value for money. Sammy's going to talk us through how to use this to its best advantage, like I say. But what we've teamed it with today is this little number. So we couldn't resist because we love, a, we love an outdoor picnic, whether it's with your kids, your grandkids. And so you've got your roll-up napkins, you've got your, your picnic bag, and then you've got a pie pot. Everybody loves a pie pot. So... Um, serving utensils roll you've got a pocket in there as well um, and you've got your food carrier it's all in there your silverware caddy it's brilliant absolutely brilliant so of course this is going to be absolutely perfect for use with your insole bright so we've got this on the show lots of different patterns i'll show you all of those in just one moment you've got your insole bright as well and we're good to go let's go and have a, a little chat to sammy now Hello. Hello. Have you enjoyed using this? Mwah, I have. I always do. I've used it quite a few times now. Have you? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, um, I'm going to open this up and show you just how much you get to use in this because it's, it's a huge amount. It's all very well yeah, you giving do. you it's the measurements. It's amazing value for money. I've used similar products before, um, but this one, it's, it's such good value for money. And the fact that it's got that reflective um, metallic layer in between the two... Now, we've used this a lot in our projects. Yes. Yeah. Um, you could use it for hair straightener pouches. Yes. Yeah. You can use it for pot holders, yeah. uh, oven mitts, if you use wadding either side, we'll get yes. on to that. Yeah. Um, you can use it as a picnic blanket, yes. table napkins, yeah. anything where you want to keep something hot or keep the heat off yes. something as yeah. well, or whether you want to see, keep something cool as well. Yeah. I'd do bottle carriers in this. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Keep, those, keep that wine. Nice and chilled. Little picnic down by yeah. the river, oh, keep yeah. the wine cool. Again, because it's got, it's the way that they've made this um, is different can, than any one that I've seen before because it's got this metallic... I'm um, just trying to show center. that. Can you just see it shining through? You've got a wadding on either side, haven't you? 
Yeah, she's got a, a, like a, a, a bonded, fluffy um, wadding on either side with this metallic layer. But because they've punched it, it means it's breathable. Ah. Unlike, again, some of them where I've seen a metallic, it's, it kind of it makes things sweat. Oh, no, you, you, don't, don't, want, oh, you no. don't want anything sweaty. Um, whereas because this is breathable, Lovely. that means that you can use it for many, many more things. OK, my favourite washable this isn't yeah. going to break down no uh because let's face it uh as soon as as soon as you take anything on a picnic something always spills to get dirty yeah absolutely yeah so you can wash it and you can tumble dry it on a low heat yeah we like that this don't microwave it because it's got the no. metal in it don't no, definitely don't, no microwave don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would even think. <laughs> so the hollow fibres basically resist conduction if we're going to get all yes. technical about it. Yes. Um, while the reflective liner reflects it all back. Yes. So it, it's not letting that radiant energy go through. Gosh, it's like being in a physics lab, isn't it? I know. There you go. But and that's what it is. This, is. this is one pack. So that's, that's a picnic blanket, surely. Yeah, And then it's going to stop the damp as well coming through. Yes, when you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, definitely going to... Yeah, definitely going to yeah. have a quilt blanket. For under six pounds? Yeah. Hello. Amazing. We've looked on the internet. Uh, that's a really good price. Yeah. For Probably anything can... of this kind, let alone the amount, you know, the quantity you actually, actually get. Actually, even just for a product. wadding, it's great value. Yeah. yeah. 5 um, You can just see... I don't know if we can... How close we can get. Just see that metal just shining on the edge. So it's needle punched through. That's why you've got that breathability. Mm. As Sammy says, this, this ain't going to sweat. Someone told me um, the other day online that they'd used it actually because of, you can, you can hear it as we're touching it. It's got that kind of crinkly, crinkly finish. Yeah. Um, they'd used it for a baby blanket. And what they'd done is they put it into like, so that the, it, was, it was a toddler blanket, like a, no, sen like a sensory, a sensory blanket. sensory one. Oh. So they'd put it in because the baby really liked cr like crinkly sounds. Crinkly. And because it's oh. breathable, as opposed to, again, a lot of the ones, um, the, a lot of the other ones are kind of chemically treated. This one isn't. Oh. Um, so it actually is baby friendly as well. So they used it in a boat to give that crinkle. Oh, fab. On a blanket. Because that's the thing. I mean, if you do, um, if you do want your kids to be outdoors, getting yeah. some fresh air, yeah. then you want to put a blanket or something down on the floor yeah. for them then this is absolutely perfect or even if you've got a patio yes. and you want them to go you don't want that cold coming yeah, no, through yeah. then this is going to give you that that uh, you get a pattern on the back you do for, oven for an oven glove if yeah but that quite a small one it's right you can size it up you size, you it, can up. Just scan it, and size uh, it up now let's just talk about oven gloves yes and things like that because yeah. um on the website in that you can use this for oven gloves you can, yes, but you have to use it with a wadding. Right. Um, again, because it's got a metallic finish, it's reflective, but they do advise that if you are going to use it in oven gloves, you use it with a wadding on both sides to protect yourself from any heat. It is heat through. reflective, yes. not heat resistant. resistant. Yes. And that's a really important point to make with this. If you're going to do this, uh, absolutely do it. And it's great for it, but it, it reflects the heat. It doesn't resist the heat. Yeah. So it will keep things warm, but it won't stop intense heat coming through, no. which is why you use a wadding in addition to this. It's yes. kind of belt and braces. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, I would say that it is probably a, maybe a little bit thin on its own yeah. to use for something that you want to be grabbing. You want that little bit more, you know, um, sponge-ness, I suppose. Um, whereas if you're putting it in a bag or a picnic bag, you don't want the bulk. No. Whereas with the hand-grabbing things, you do. So I would say that even for a, a personal preference, I probably would use a wadding anyway. Well, this is the thing, you know, uh, kids going to school make their own little lunch boxes. Yes. My son eats a lot. He's yeah. going to be tall, yeah. not going to lie. Most <laughs> of the little cool bags that they do for schools, <laughs> Quite small. I can't fit everything no. in. I like what that's just a snack well, box. Particularly kind of with lots, but you know, if you want to put lots of pieces of fruit and things in. And if I want to put his drink in as well yeah. and keep that cool, yeah. then it's just not big enough. So he, yes. need, he needs a big one. A um, big, and a so decent sized bag. This keeps things cool as well as keeping things warm. warm. So yeah. hot things hot, cool things cool. And that's how it works. That's why it's been so popular. Um, we haven't mentioned yet, of course, the stadium seating. Did we tell you about the stadium seating? No. We had a fabulous email in from a viewer who said that she was off to... Um, her, fa her and her family were off to a football match. Oh, yeah? And she'd yeah. made little stadium seats. <gasps> so, of course, because the plastic little... seats are cold... Of course, yeah, that would be warm. perfect. Perfect, yes. Yeah, definitely. I, I love this stuff. I can't get enough of it. 
Yay, let's have a look at some of the things that we've made with it. And what you'll also notice is that on the show, we've got all of these fabrics. So we've got a cool bag in there, we've got oven mitts, we've got several oven mitts, we've got placemats. You see, this is, it's absolutely perfect. Coasters as well. Job done. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, protect your nice tables and everything. I want a picnic, I want a picnic blanket. Yeah, me too it. now. Nothing yeah. said it. <laughs> uh, just, you know, just saying. Um, I think at some point we need to design a wine carrier. Oh, I think so. I think that's Maybe definitely one, on like, the cards. Maybe one panniers, so you could put them over the back of your bicycle. Oh, that would be cool. Wine bottle it? panniers. I'm not sure I'd advise drinking and cycling. At we the can same go time. there. Yeah, you'd have to just kind of walk back. Push your bike back. <laughs> That would be fun. Yes, no, I think that would work. No, I think that would work. Again, yeah, perfect, perfect for We both stopped to think about that. We both like How imagining that the day. Would work. <laughs> How the wine bottle pannier would work out with you I reckon you could, definitely do, I, you could definitely do um, a, 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 you know, a, a, a posh wine bag that you could take with you to take. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you or want to do a double one. One for your gin, one for your tonic. Well, yeah, obviously. Obvious. What do you um, think about this? But if you made one to take to someone's house... As a, as a gift, you yes. know, with your bottle of wine that yes. you're going to take as a hostess gift or whatever. Because wine is one of those things that's very difficult to wrap. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's yeah. no prizes for guessing what it is no. at all. But if it comes beautifully wrapped in something that's keeping it cool, you go yeah. to somebody's house for dinner, like you say, and maybe you want that wine already chilled and yeah. to stay cool. If you've got a little journey to get there, it can, you know... But again, because uh, because of the, the weight of this, um, I like it because it's thin. Obviously, if you're going to pad it up, that's fine. But um, because it's thin, you could easily make a little draw, you know, a very simple drawstring bag with this layer oh. in between that you could just pop your wine bottle in. Nice. doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be difficult, you know. Do you want to see how much you get? It's, it's a huge amount. 1.15 metres by just under a metre by 91 centimetres. It's good, isn't it? It's a yeah. huge amount there. I mean, we're saying um, we're saying picnic blanket, but I mean, even a blanket blanket at home. If you're someone that really feels the cold, oh, or if you sit around a lot, if you're um, doing a lot of knitting or something, or you're sitting in front of the television and you get cold feet. I know a friend of mine. Um, me, I always have gets cold very feet. cold feet. Um, you know, why not make one of those little booty things to sit in front of the TV that you put your feet, that two feet in at once, That's and put a this thing? in? Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> you can get heated oh, ones, but you know, I've just like a little idea. double booty. Yeah. If we're going on the blanket theme, yeah. A friend of mine um, has kids that do all sorts of different sports. Yes. Wet, cold, muddy when they get in the car. Yeah. She always keeps a blanket in the car so that they, because invariably they think, any cold, yeah. can you turn the heating yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> now they're warm. Yeah. Yeah. Do a beautiful blanket or whatever. Patchwork. Beautiful. And again, because it's washable. Uh, yeah. So it's going it's to keep out, them wash warm. It. Yeah. And then because they've got mud on it, you can wash it. Job done. Yep. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And you can tumble dry it. This is the joy of your Intel Bright. Five ninety five for under six pounds. You're getting nearly a metre square of this. In fact, it pretty much is, it just isn't cut in a square metre. You've got 114 centimetres by 91. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, just... Um, YQRW79, Sheila's message in. Hello, Sheila. Would it be good for a food mixer cover? Perfect. Yeah, yeah anything like that. Why food not? mix cover, coffee machine cover, yeah. T <gasps> Tea cosies. Yes, tea cosies. Do people cozies? still have tea cosies? Yeah, I do. Because then it's just to keep... teapots. I still have a teapot. I love teapots. Underused, I feel. So, yeah, definitely for a cosy would work what really do you, well. What have you got there? You're clutching two, two things here. I just, what are this these? is just to show, I just wanted to show, um, A, how easy it was to stitch through it. Right. So, okay. I've done one with a lot of quilting on here, and you can see it's, I've just, you know, chomped straight through, not a problem. So this really could be easy a, to sew. This could be a, a pot grab. Yes, yeah, absolutely, with binding. Obviously, if I hadn't bound the edges, I just wanted yeah. to show it. So, that's just it on its own. Right. That's just, and that's kind of how thick it looks when it's quilted in between. Um, two layers, that's our lovely Amy Butler fabric there. Um, and then this is it with a wadding, so this is, it gets slightly chunkier. This is using the cotton fusible wadding that we have. Um, and I've just used it to one side of the fabric and then put the other, and then easily you could put another layer in there. So that just makes it a little bit more bouncy. You can see yeah. it's got a bit more volume going on there. We had, actually, you've just reminded me, especially because you've got the tilde fabric there, we had, um, Oh, who was it? Andrew Atwood made a beautiful bread basket. Yes. Yeah, yeah, with the pinched in corners. But the thing is, you want your bread to keep warm if yeah. it's just come out of the oven. Yes, yeah, so this would And help. you want it to breathe. You don't want bread sweating. No. Nope. So this would make a beautiful... Yeah, perfect for those. ...fabric bread basket. Yeah. 
Job done. Yeah, perfect. Another use for it. Once you've got this in your stash, yeah. use it instead. Um, as, as long as you're not using it to take hot things out the oven, yes. just use it as it is, as a wadding. Otherwise, use it uh, with a wadding on either side if you're using it for oven and gloves like I or say, something like that. If you're making, um, again, if, if you, if you can, again, you can hear that lovely noise it makes. Um, if you're making books for kids, you know, again, in a similar oh, yes. way to play mats or even um, elderly people with dementia, I've seen quite a lot of mats recently where they have, um, they put on their laps to fiddle with things because yes. they like to be able to yes. fiddle with things. Yes. Again, this would be a great something to put in sensory. those. Sensory. Yeah, sensory. Perfect. Some of those right. Kind of Let's talk about cutting because yeah. we've, we've talked about it, haven't you? mustn't put it in the microwave because it's got that metallic thing. Yeah. So is this okay to use our dressmaking scissors with? I would say don't use your very best dressmaking scissors on it. Next grade down. <laughs> but use your kind of, yeah, use your, your second best. Um, but yes, absolutely no reason why I love why that we grade our scissors. To. Yeah, well, I do. I've got hundreds of pairs. Um, I would say um, rotary cutter the same. Don't use a brand new blade. Use a kind right. of a blade that's been on for a while that okay. you're just about to get rid of. Um, it's, it cuts through super easily you don't even need to press very hard at all it's easier to cut through than fabric i think um well at least i i find it easier um so i would say yeah don't don't use your best brand new blade on it because it it may because of that metallic finish it may not like it very much yeah but kind of five two week old blade five. should be fine but it's two week old blade so that's very easy. specific <laughs> If you've got That's two weeks and a day, forget it. Yeah. Two week old blade. Let's have a cut with this then, shall we? Oh, there you go, like a dream. But you can see how easy, because it is just that bonded layer. It's a good noise with those scissors, so isn't smooth. it? smooth. Um, is this the first time we brought these scissors to air? Producer Paul. Just spotted these. Titanium non-stick. Hello. I think yeah. Look at these, titanium non-stick scissors. They're brilliant, though. Very good for, again, titanium non-stick, very good for cutting metallics and things like that. Are these going to be um, the sort of scissors that you can use as craft scissors as well? So if they're I the would say, Yeah, I would say general purpose. I've got um, a pair of these at home with the plain white um, blades, and they work brilliantly as kind of, like I say, like my second level down. I've yeah. got my rose gold for my beautiful cutting my fabric and, you know, every day... Um, in my everyday sewing. It's only the non-stick is making me think, oh, hello, if you've got non-stick, then like we were using that super sticky tape earlier. Yes, yeah. 11.95, Kind of general purpose, but would be good enough, you know, would be good enough for your fabric as well. Can I have quite a Quite happily, yeah, by me. Did, you, did you have this cut specially for no, no, something? No, no, it's just my spare piece. Oh, I like these. They're nice, something. They've got a nice feel to it's them. The, I don't know if we can... It's the snip. <laughs> Love that noise, don't you? It's really satisfying. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, and look, as well, all the way to the tip. tip. And that's what you want with a pair of scissors, which means, look, hang on. You can chop it up into lots of little bits. You can. And this, this was the really important thing. We were, we were making bunny ears yesterday, mm. which is important. But when going around the curves... And you just wanted to yeah, snip. Want to snip or snipping notches. Yeah, so snipping and notches. Making and it's done because you want that scissor that is sharp to the tip and fist scars are fab. Fact. Yep. So titanium non-stick. We've not brought these to air for you again. Multi-purpose, and that's the joy. So if you are after a scissor, not just for your fabric. Kind of Perfect. general crafting yeah. purposes, I would say. Obviously, they are sharp enough to cut fabric. So, if you mm. are doing smaller craft projects, I say because obviously they are a shorter length. Again, though, if you've got small hands, I use a, a smaller pair of scissors than a, a large tailor's shear. We used to use a large tailor's shear in the shop to cut big, fab, you know, big bits of fabric. Um, but because I've got quite small hands, I like to use a smaller pair of scissors. I feel more in control. Oh. Okay, eleven ninety-five. Multi-purpose HZGQ thirty-two. Nice little add into the basket, this one. Also, the Fiskars normally have, um, if you're not keen on Fiskars, normally they've got quite hard um, plastic handles, which these have, but these also have the rubbery oh, the grip on rubbery the inside, soft grip. Yeah. which is unusual for Fiskars. So if you like that angle, but you want that rubber grip, you've got the kind of combination of the both They there. do. They do sit. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. It's not often that scissors cause such excitement upstairs in the gallery <laughs> but because we've got we've got boys producing and directing today and they're going yeah titanium sounds really manly titanium. doesn't it yeah yes. titanium scissors got the titanium scissors out yep boys definitely boys <laughs> uh, now insole bright what are we making with this today 
We're not. I'm not making anything I'm today. Making, we're just, just going to talk about it, and then we're going to show. We're going to talk about the, how you can use it with the pattern. Oh, the pattern! I wanted to talk about um, how to use a pattern because a lot of people have been asking. Obviously, we've been showing. Yes. But we thought we'd go through specifically, particularly with these multi-craft patterns because they they can be quite overwhelming. And I have talked about it a little bit. Is your glamp? Yes. You can glamp fantastic with this. I love that. Um, You've got a pie holder. That yes. makes me happy. <laughs> That's why my husband will be very happy about. He loves a, a good pie. A pie holder. That's awesome. Now, presumably, that would also fit a casserole dish or something like that yes, as well. But like um, to keep... And, of course, use that in conjunction with your insulbrite. Right? Yeah. You're not going to have a soggy crust on your pie. No. It's going to be perfect pies all around. Yeah, absolutely. Again, with that breathability that the insulbrite has, it means that you won't get condensation and... You won't get a soggy bottom. You don't want soggy <laughs> bottoms with your pies. It's no word of a lie. It's true. Um, maybe you have a relative that you take dinners round for. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you, you've you've made it it's hot out the oven. You want to take it or to your neighbour, your elderly neighbour or something next yes. door. Yeah. And you take food round, pop it in one of these. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I quite go. like the fact that obviously they've put a pie in it. Um, but, uh, you know, That's just good, again, we're like talking about price. lunch boxes. Yes. That would work per perfectly as a, a, you know, a slightly larger lunch box if you take a pasta salad to work or something. You know, again, keeps it nice and cool. So you kind of, although it shows a pie, you don't have to make, you don't have to put pies in it, I promise. Oh, I don't, don't have know. to put pie in it. <laughs> Flans, quiches, yeah, yeah, they'd quiche, all go in quiche, there. In yes. fact, anything, in a, because this is the thing, isn't it? Um, often you, uh, you only get square ones, yeah. but a lot of my bowls are round. Yeah, well, so it's functional. Yeah, so bizarre. that's perfect. Uh, so on, you are getting here. Let me. Uh, so you get your serving utensil roll. Yeah. And you can do it with a contrasting pocket. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can also get your band food carrier. Yeah, and you've also so then you've got. Well, you've you've got everything here, haven't you? It's just great for picnics, proms in the park, I mean, the festivals. Thing is, is, although, obviously, you've got... <clears throat> yeah, the thing I love about um, uh, quite a lot of commercial patterns is that, obviously, you've got... It suggests that you should use it for a picnic mm -hmm. and it gives you things. But when you look at the drawing of this, the, you know, the, the basic drawing, you can see here what you've got is... You've got a nice bag with different pockets in it. I don't know if they're going... Are you going overhead you with going this overhead? or do you want me to hold it up? <laughs> they're going overhead. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. There okay. we go. There we go. So you get a drawing here. You can see, basically, you get a really nice bag. Yes. Like, I mean, tote, tote yes. bags, make it in anything. A nice round, obviously, padded. I mean, you could use that to make a, a cosmetics case. Yes. It doesn't have to be for holding food. doesn't have to have the interbite in it. It would be great if it did, but it doesn't have to. And here you've got a roll that has slots in it, obviously, and designed Makeup for cutlery. Brushes. But, yeah. That's, Pens. Again, and you've got a slightly smaller version here. So this, you know, although you have suggestions for how to use patterns, you can, if you look at something and go, oh, I, I actually would really love that as a, a baby changing bag mm. for a friend because it's got the right amount of pockets in it, do that. You're not tied. Doesn't have, you don't have to do... You've just given me a brilliant idea. What? Well, when we talk about baby changing bags, so what? many mums, of course, carry formula yes. for their babies. Yeah, yeah. And if you need to keep that cool, yes. have an insulated pop pocket, pocket inside with your the bag. insulin, right? Yes. And then you've got something that's going to keep that cool. But as part of your baby change bag, so you've also got your nappies and everything else, the paraphernalia, let's yeah. face it, that come yeah. with small children. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there's always, there is. Um, and then, I don't know if you've got a child that won't drink drinks once they've got warm. Mm-hmm. I've got an adult that That's does the that. That's thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, well, yeah. Then have a pocket. Or if you're yeah. making a bag, why not make a cool, a keep cool pocket in there? In the bag. So that when you buy a bottle of water or whatever, you keep it in there. And then by the time that you come to drink it at midday or whatever, it's not gone warm. Yay! This is so useful. Really uh, Five ninety five. Thank you so much for all of you getting in touch um, about your insole bright. Lots of positive messages about it, about the price, about what you've made with it. Really useful piece of kit. Um, YQRW79. We've decided to champion it today because we've had so many messages about it. Um, and we, we wanted to just go through lots of ideas. We wanted to bring you a pattern which we thought was absolutely perfect to use with it. If you don't want to just think of something. We've brought you previous ideas of um, table mats, place mats. Um, we've also bought... Uh, 
uh, blah, 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 what's it called? Oven Coasters, uh, oven mugs, mug oven mugs, mug posies in it, uh, lunch boxes, snack boxes. If you've just joined us and you're not sure what Intel Bright does, here's the thing. Um, it basically insulates. Hmm. So it's heat resist. It's um, heat reflective not heat resistant yes. so if you're using it for a, 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 an oven glove put wadding on either side so you've got yeah. the resistance but this is heat reflective the metal in it's got sort of a, a metally core in the middle um, which means that as the heat comes out it's reflected back in I don't know if you can see it it's needle punch so that it's breathable so it's not going to make things sweat be it yourself or your dinner so you can see that sheen from the metal in there. There we go. And it's the same either side. And can you hear the crunch? Very easy to use. So it's got a, a hollow polyester fibre on there, uh, but it just it's, it's providing that layer of insulation uh, with and then having that reflective sheet in the middle. Either it's reflecting the cold back and keeping things cool or reflecting the heat back in and keeping things warm. Or if you're using it like this, I love the idea of the stadium seats, yeah. then that means that it's keeping your butt warm yes. and it's not letting that cold through. So lots of multi-buyers on this. I'm not surprised. You're getting a huge amount with this. This is how it comes out of the packet. That's how much you're getting for $5.95. That, for me, is a, is a, a picnic blanket. That's yeah. a keep-the-kids-warm blanket when they've finished sports. Wrap them in that. Yeah, I think how many gin cosies you could make with that. <laughs> gin cosies? Gin cosies. I don't think make gin cosies. Bottle coolers. <laughs> yeah. Anything you like. Well, here's the thing. I mean, this is the other thing, isn't it? You could do little bottle cosies, beer, beer covers. Yeah, yeah. If you have a party, how annoying is it? You put your bottle of beer down and, and then know you don't know whose is whose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe people's names on them. <gasps> you could put initials on, couldn't you? You could, yeah. Well, because you have the little rings, don't you, for your wine glasses, bottle yeah. of, so, so that you know which one was yours. So there's no reason why you can't do that. Had for you already used this before you came here? I've used similar things before, but I'd never used this particular product. Hey. And I love it. We, we've, yeah, we've got it, we've used I'm, it. I'm a convert, definitely. I would use this over any others now. Really? Yeah. Why? I think because it's got that metallic... Um, the, the metallic um, core, I think, is what makes the difference to me. The fact that it's it's so lightweight. A lot of the ones I've used in the past have been quite heavy. Okay. Um, and quite bulky. They make things quite stiff. Um, and obviously, you don't always want that, particularly yes. with something if you're just making um, lightweight bags or if we said we're making something to go inside something else or just putting a single layer in. Um, so much nicer to have something that's not heavy, not bulky. Um, you know, and it sews so beautifully. I don't have to change the needle on my sewing machine to sew through this. Oh, no, that's a great, yeah, that's a great scissors. point. You know, quilting through it, it just glides through. Again, because it's breathable as well. Again, a lot of the ones I've used before haven't been breathable um, with that, that punched finish. You know, you get such a, a, a wider variety of things to be able to use it for heat well, and cold. that means that you can also use it, because it's safe to use with children, yes. you can use it as a pram cosy. Yes. So, you know, when, when your kids go out in the buggies yeah. and you want their feet and everything warm, then you can make the little... The little Toe cosy, you can make those. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely lovely. Margaret's message, and thank you, Margaret, for your message. She said, thank you for keeping up with the fabulous shows. Well, thank oh, you for watching you. and keeping up with the fabulous shows. Um, let's have a look at this this pattern again, because sure. I know that you wanted to talk through all the different aspects of the pattern. It is a multi-pattern in here. Um, a great value with the pattern. Uh, you're getting one, two, three, four different items. So if I can just show you here... This one here is going to give you, um, okay, this one here is giving you your uh, utensils, your yard, larger utensils, and then your bag, and then your pot holder. Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. Um, so if we can just get a shot of that, then that would be great. But like we said, although it's obviously designed for picnic, where there's no reason why you can't use this for, you know, the bag for, like, baby changing bag... No reason you can't, why you can't make the pie thing just as a lunchbox. You could do this as, yes, a baby change bag, but what about um, a, a weekend bag? Yeah, weekend So you could tote, put yeah. your... Um, and then you could put a pouch in there for your straighteners, hair yeah, straighteners. Yeah, hair straighteners. Because th that's the thing with hair straighteners. They're the last thing that you use. Yeah. 
<laughs> before you leave the house and then you've yeah. got to put them straight in your bag. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. You, you, you leave your hotel room and you've got to wait for them to cool down. Yeah, the number of times that I've just had to, like, carry Walk them. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Because yeah. my husband's going, come on, we're late again. <laughs> I can't imagine who makes us late. I know. What's that? He doesn't have hair. Well, he does have hair, but he doesn't have to do anything yeah. to it. <laughs> My husband doesn't have any hair. Oh, there you go, see, even his hair. Uh, right, what are we doing? I was just going to show you. So what you get when you get the pattern is obviously you get your pattern envelope, which has quite a lot of information on mm. it, which basically tells you everything you need to get in order to make it. OK. So it'll give you the instructions. And your with, yardage. Um, with McCall's patterns, they give you um, everything in um, metric and imperial. Because they're American, right. they'll give you imperial on one side and then metric on the other. Okay. So obviously you do have to do a little bit of investigating because sometimes the metric side is in French. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is a bit complicated, but obviously you can easily see here quite easily. Oh, back to the shot we were before. Um, that everything here is in yardage. So it'll tell you exactly what you need to make each one. So you can easily kind of slide over to the other side and see that just gives you it in centimetres okay. on the other side. And so it's quite centimetres, easy. centimetres, so that's easy. Yes, yeah, we saw both. And to be honest, there's only um, th three inches difference between a yard and a metre. So that's oh, okay. like, you know, five centimetres or so difference. Um, so always just, if you're particularly with um, smaller project patterns, just err on the side of caution, get a little bit more. Yeah. So if it says a yard by a metre, yeah. you know, you, Happy you're days. Gonna, as long as it's more than, you're always going to be you're safe. You could go. So we've got this to go with the insole bright, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to go and show you some of the projects that we've okay. used this for. Yep. I'll be back. Okay. What we've done on the show for you today is... Um, Bring back some of the best love projects that we've used the Insel Bright with. We've also put these fabrics on the show for you. So when you go onto the website and you, you view live where the message where the message box is underneath there, there's a great long list of everything that we've used on the shows and the fabrics will be on there. Or just give us a call 0800 112 4433. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So to start off with, if you bought the Rick Rack earlier, then you're on to a winner. This is... Oops, Insul Bright inside. This is for your coaster. Insul Bright on the inside. So a nice cup of tea isn't going to spoil that, uh, that, that varnish or the wax on the top of, uh, of your table. So again, used with the Insul Bright. So there we have those coasters. Table mat to match. So again, protecting our tables. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? It's just such a versatile product. And that's why so many of you multi-buy with this. For under six pounds to get um, 114 centimetres by 91 centimetres is just incredible value. Even as just a wadding alone, despite the fact that it keeps things hot, keeps things cool, it just is a great piece of kit to have in your stash. Uh, and I think a lot of you do. You know, you've used it, you come back for it. It is one of our best-selling uh, waddings. So we've also, so more placemats. And then if you, let's have a look at this. So these have been previous projects. So the install bright is in the middle. If you are making oven gloves, please do put a wadding layer that side and either side so sandwich the insole bright in the middle this is heat reflective not heat resistant okay but it is still great for these maybe you want to make tea cozies pot holders pot grabs anything like that and we've got this fabric as well for you this is your utensils some of you've been sharing on facebook and on social media uh, some of the gorgeous designs that you've done um, and in fact i saw some i think they'd edged them in green which looked brilliant. Um, they made some of these. So the utensil fabric, let's show this, because this is always a very popular one. Let me waft that around for you. 4.95 per half meter. This is made by Macawa. So 100% cotton, perfect for all your kitcheny needs. So whether you're making cushions for the kitchen table, whether you're making, like we say, pot holders, tea cozies, um, then you are absolutely good to go with this. I think it's brilliant. And, and, you know, also make your pinnies. This is quite a manly one as well. You can do those for your husband if he likes to barbecue. Then why not make him a pinny to do that in? I oh, know it's an apron then, isn't it, if it's for a chap? 4 95 per half a metre, EGMY62. Oh, now you know what we haven't thought about? Um, and that is... Oh, 
is the um, is this is the garden one because there's no reason why you can't use this for picnics but also for that avid gardener you don't want whammy tea you don't want tea that's going to go cold make a little cup holder have you never heard of the word whammy was that just that's just something that my grandma used to call it when your tea goes whammy you know when it's not quite hot not quite cold and you don't really want to drink it um so and also uh if you want to do those kneeling mats for gardeners keep your knees warm this is a fabulous, fabulous material. This is your antique garden collection, again by Macawa. And this is 545. If you are making for anyone that loves a spot of gardening in their life, this is a fabulous material. It's going to look great in conservatories. Maybe you're making mud co mug cozies. Um, it's brilliant. It'd be a lovely one to take down the allotment. It's, yeah, down the allotment as well. Tea make a little tea, tea and biscuits, <laughs> snacks. You can make your, uh, your lunchbox out of that. Maybe, you know, absolutely perfect for that. It's a really lovely fabric. You've got all sorts of gardening-y type things. Now, match that with your um, camping as well. Anybody that likes a great outdoors, this is perfect. And, of course, use this with your camping patterns. And you've got all sorts of other ideas for lunch boxes um, and, you know, utensil wraps, all those sorts of things for your gardener. It's lovely material, really lovely material. We haven't, we've barely seen this on air. 545 BCMY18. I know that a lot of the rest of the range is sold out and gone. So, um, it was on you know, day one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was on sort of week one. So if you, if you missed out, but you love it, do grab it because I don't know if this is coming back. Um, because I know that a, a lot of the rest of this range has gone and when we tried to put some on the show we couldn't put it on because we didn't have it in stock anymore. So if you are after this material and you love it, buy what you need now. So whether you're making conservatory um, cushions or whatever it is that you're doing with it, 5.45 per half a metre there. Now of course perfect to use with your insel bright, which is what we've made all of these with. So Insel Bright is all round here, all through the sides, all round. This is your little snack pot, clearly not big enough for lunch. There you go, that's made, um, we made that a few weeks ago, made that with Jennifer Taylor, I do believe. But beautiful fabrics again, and again, all these fabrics are on the show for you as well. Hey, there's my travel mug. I wonder where that had gone from. I just, I've that's just not, spotted it. It's not going to say sit up. Did they name. put any tea in it? No, they haven't. <laughs> How they rude. Did, <laughs> <laughs> this is my non-spill one so that I can use it oh, in the yeah. studio. <laughs> if anyone had uh, thought to put any tea in it. Oh, good, it's been through the... Uh, been through the dishwasher, dishwasher that's right. good. at least they cleaned Excellent. it excellent yeah no, that's <laughs> fine good uh, as we were right so you can use it as you you see that um that garden material yeah yeah for your mug cozy yeah take it down the end of the garden to the shed yeah or jenny yeah. Kelly's new she shed yes do you have a she shed i don't know i've got a room though I've you've got, got a room. room yeah get a room get a room or a she shed <laughs> i'd never heard of the term she shed yeah do you know what there's a whole like Instagram it's a thing. thing, yeah. There's I'm like not down with the kids programs. Though. And we've, stuff. we've already realised that I'm not not great on social media. <laughs> There's a TV the program kids. though that's about like she sheds. about well about sheds in general, like what people have in their shed, and there's quite a lot of she sheds on there. Do you get shed envy? I do. I quite like a shed, although my garden's on a kind of weird angle, so I would be like mountaineering to get up there in the winter. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And that's what I've got from in my house. <laughs> what have you used your insole bright from? Do you have photos of what you've made your insole bright with? Um, made with your insole bright. That makes more sense. Um, so <laughs> underneath watching live, you can message the studio. Now that is a bit like Twitter. It's got a, 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 a top number that you can use uh, letter wise yes. so if you've got lots to say a capped number is what yeah, I'm trying to say character. of letters yeah. of characters uh, then send us a great long email studio at sevenquarter.com is the way to send us lots and lots and lots and underneath all your rickrack all your fabrics your lampshades all those beautiful embroidery skeins that we had on earlier it's all on there all on there fab even the hoops yeah nice Gold. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I'm just thinking about... Because you could hoop it and embroider it. Yeah, no reason why not. Because it's you? thin enough, you can certainly put that through a hoop. 
Yeah. And then there would be no arguments over whose mug rug was whose. Well, absolutely. Yeah, this, this stuff, because that's, this, that's, so that's a layer of it, just one layer between two layers of fabric. And you can see how flexible that is. It's not, you know, not stiff in any way, not too kind of crunchy. It would happily go through a hoop. And you can see I've done loads of lines of stitching through there. It's absolutely fine. It's not made it go loopy or caught or anything. It's no, it's nice and crisp. I didn't measure it? the lines. I just did it freehand, so don't look at that too closely. But you can see it went through. <laughs> the stitching is perfect, whether it's you know measured perfectly placed or not. not. It's, <laughs> yeah. Um, under six pounds for Interbright, five ninety five. YQRW seventy nine. Uh, the other thing, of course, is Andrew Atwood's bread basket. Yes, yeah. It's perfect for yeah, all these things. Yeah, it would be things. perfect, yeah. There's so many things. I mean, again, if you get very cold feet, why not put it in the slippers that we met, that I made a couple of weeks ago on the base? Ooh. If you've got wooden floors, for instance, in your house, which I do, yeah. the base of my feet get quite cold, so I could put a layer underneath yes, to keep the what a great idea. cool from coming up from underneath on the bottom of your slippers. It is a truly multi use product yeah isn't it just the more we think about it the more ideas we keep coming up with which is why we said we wanted to do a whole show on it because we just thought you know just uh, just so on your ideas, ideas as yeah. well um if you've got any photos please do send those in as well we like to see them um 5.95 even if we can't show them on the show we still like to rootle through and have a oh, look oh yeah because they might come up for another show even if they don't do it on this one so if you've just joined us you know what is this insul bright that you speak <laughs> of okay None of us can spell it, though, can we? <laughs> we'll keep writing it down wrong. Oh, no, well, no we, don't, we don't do... Well, it's got a hyphen and everything. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> this is what the packaging looks like. It says, the company says, the warm company is pleased to present Insul Bright, an insulating material ideal for home sewers and crafters. With today's focus shifting to family and home, sewers and crafters are choosing simple practical projects for use in their homes and as gifts. Pot holders, oven mitts and casserole covers are fun, practical projects made safe with Insul Bright and a layer of cotton is recommended to absorb condensation. There we go. And then it says it in um, Spanish. <laughs> It's and American, you, they yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, if you want the free, it's, you've got free patterns as well with this, so you can download them from the website, which is www.thewarmcompany.com. And um, what I would say about that is do read through because they do give you lots of different ways yes. to use them. And, and that's yeah. where we learn about with the oven mitts. Making sure that you put the wadding on both yeah. sides. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, it does say not intended for microwave use, but you can machine wash it on a warm setting and you can dumble dry it. And you can warm iron if needed as well. The other thing I made the other day was, I've spoken to you before, but haven't I, about the fact that I have... A, an iron right next to my sewing machine because I yes. use it all the time. Yes. So what I did was I took, I've got an old one of these um, cutting mats yes. that was a non-healing one that's got big chunks taken out of it. So yeah. I can't use it anymore. Um, that's before I got a self-healing one. Um, and what I did was I covered it in a layer of Insul Bright and now have it underneath my sewing machine. Oh, that's so I've got clever. My, I, I, it's about this big so I've got it on my desk and I've got my machine sits on top of it so I can literally sew iron sew iron oh that's sew. clever <laughs> that's so very if I'm doing, clever if I'm doing bias binding or something it's just you know my whole surface is now iron proof because of the initial bright that's brilliant so it's like an ironing board but a big square sheet of it so that I can just do it whatever I want and I covered it in a nice fabric that I like so it's yeah it's really nice now it's hey like do you know sewing machine that's a great setup. idea and and I guess similar to the pad that we iron on as well isn't it yes yeah very, very similar, similar to that because a lot of you ask us where we get that this is you know these slightly bit like slightly heavier weight and it kind of helps yeah. to keep it down and talking of fabric that we love yeah wait there I'm just going to grab this and go back um, I'm going to waft this around for you because half a metre for 5.45. Very, very popular. Producer Paul's never seen this before. I've only seen it once. So this is your Macawa Antique Garden Scatter. Really I lovely. I like there's something for everyone on here. There is, isn't there? I gardener, like there's little bicycles with flowers on and little flower And pages. there are the birds as well. So whether you're um, yeah. someone who likes to have the birds in the garden, then you've got the robin on there, you've got seed packs, you've got butterflies. The more you look at it, the more there is in there for people to so find. Do you, remember you had, do you remember you had those books when you were little where you had to find lots of... Like there was big... 
big, um, big. Pe Where's Wally? Yeah, kind of, but it wasn't. But, it, but with actual items. But yeah, and you had to. There was a thing at the front, an index of things you had to find in the book. It reminds me of those. A grown-up version. Yeah. Find me the so, rakes. So pretty. Yeah. Oh God, rakes. Uh, oh, there he is. There you go. Right. Find me the robin. I saw him a minute ago. Where is he? Down here. Down here. Yeah. He's, Down well, here. there's one on the bird bath. No, that's not a robin on the bird bath. That's another. There was a robin on his own here somewhere. Yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, there's yeah. one. Uh, you've got um, you've got gardening gloves. You've got sack of tools. You've got bees. <laughs> it's so beautifully printed. Though. You've got like lavender little... in a basket. Seed packs as well. Macau did it so well, don't they? The, uh, the printing on it is so... You, you know, you can actually read the words on the pea packet. You've got topiary. You've got, fro you've got a frog. Look at the frog. Come on. Oh, hang on. Left, oh, oh. right, right. Left, left. that way. Okay. There's a frog. That's so cute. Oh, I like him. And underneath, you've got the bees. But the, this is a fab fabric. So pretty. Why have we not seen this more? Uh, so, I think it's because it's the last one. Or one of the last ones in that collection left. So. Ah, aprons, um, coverings for your conservatory cushions. Yeah. Uh, kneel, kneeling things that yeah, gardeners kneel, need. Yeah, kneeling you could mats, use your yeah. insult bright with that as well. Again, keep the moisture and the heat off your knees. Oh, cold. Really, it's a great fabric, isn't it? Just really lovely. Producer Paul is going as far to say this is possibly one of his favourites. <gasps> dot, 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 ever. Goodness me. Yeah. And he's hard to please. He's hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, B, C, M, well, that's a whole other story. Uh, y, 18, 5, 45. This is your antique garden collection by Macawa. Right, nice. I love your allotment idea. Yeah. Sending hubby off. Reminds me of my grandpa. He used Does to it? spend a lot of time in his garden. He used to have an allotment at the back. Oh. Yeah. I like. Uh, I'm going to go and grab the oven gloves as well because the kitchen utensils I love that fabric again I love it because it's it's unisex boy or girl like you were saying barbecue yeah, friendly if you've absolutely. got a barbecue boy likes a barbecue my husband likes he's got a, a pizza oven oh. that's his thing at the moment yeah it heats up to like 500 degrees it's amazing yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he's always, every night is pizza night in our <laughs> pizza, house. Pizza, pizza, mm. let's have pizza. Well, well, this is a great a idea. Oven. So this is 4.95 per half a metre. We've used Insel Bright, can you hear crinkle, crinkle, crinkle yeah. with wadding in there. So wadding either side, Insel Bright in the middle. That, that sort of recipe, if you will, is on their website, which is on the back of your packaging when you get yeah. your Insel Bright. So 4.95. Okay. Slightly more manly glove. Yeah. One-handed one, oh. one glove man thing. <laughs> well, I, I, I like a one-handed glove, but sometimes yeah. you just need the two, don't yeah, well, you? Well, bigger pots, obviously. Need two. I want to make a little mini pair for Freddie because he's got um, oh. he's got a little what, a little, a little, little kitchen, kitchen. Oh, and he cute. likes it, and he loves it because then he he pretends to cook as we cook. Brilliant, Brilliant. yeah. Um, although plastic potatoes aren't that tasty. No, no. And he does try to make you chew them. <laughs> uh, Four ninety-five. <laughs> I can hear anyone saying who I've cooked for in the past. <laughs> a bit like your food, yeah. then. Uh, 4 95 <laughs> there with your Leela's <laughs> Kitchen range by Macawa. 100% cotton. Yeah, gorgeous quality as usual with Macawa. That's, that's what they're known for, isn't it, Macau? Is that good quality yeah, cotton? Yeah, I mean, all of the brands that we have here are really, you know, really... I mean, that we wouldn't have them if they weren't. We've been very careful about that. It, it's yeah. about bringing a cotton that's very usable, very um, easy to work with because Versatile of it being... For different, over different yeah. projects. So obviously, we do so many different projects on Sewing Quarter. Um, we all need to be able to use it for all different of things. Of course, absolutely. Um, now, stay there because I want to show you some really pretty, pretty, pretty fabrics... In two Some different colourways. Woohoo! I'm bringing you a bundle of Tanya Wheeler. So, this is the this Lola earlier. one. This is the one. And the reason that I'm bringing this out is because you had this on your hoop on our 8 o'clock show. I and did. this is the one you started to embroider with. I did. Now, Tanya Wheeler... Um, is a, a designer that you will have seen, even if you didn't know her name. Yeah. You will have seen her designs. Um, she's been on the front cover of sort of romantic homes and, yes. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, she does. Yeah, her prints appear on lots of, you know, pre-made things in shops, not just fabric. Absolutely. Um, I've got paper kits oh, yeah. uh, with, with Tanya Wheeler on and Wheeler on, and it's just beautiful. So you've got in here this turquoise, this gorgeous turquoise, 
this is up there. This is such a pretty, pretty fabric. Now, you were going to fussy cut round those yeah. flowers. Yeah. And um, applique them, them onto a top. Uh, but this is one of those ones where you can really fussy cut with it. Um, and I would say perfect for your applique. Or actually, we used to have curtains in a very similar fabric. When okay, growing so up. versatile. I just, I love the and fact timeless. that this is a slightly bigger print because a lot of the prints, again, a lot of the prints we have are quite small because they have to be versatile um, for all different projects. But I love the fact that it's a slightly bigger print, mm. which means it works really well for clothing. Well, it also means that if you wanted to do your picnic blanket and mm -hmm. then have a ticking yeah. down the side, then you've yeah. got that. And that comes again with that blue. 6 95 per half a metre there. S Z R W unashamedly pretty. You see, I love the the fact that obviously this is the the lines the ticking. If you were doing the bag from the pattern, you could use that for the straps. Oh, perfect! You know, and again, kind of fussy cut the strips out so that you've got your straps and your bows and everything on your side of this, all in those strips, and then make the main body of the bag in the mm. bigger floral. And this is um, we've used these product uh, these these in some of the project that we've made. Um, there they are. You know, we've also got the clock fabric on the show as well. We've got the papillon range, which is the butterflies and the boob. It's just ever so pretty. Um, right, let's have another look <laughs> because so many of you are really going crazy uh, for the garden. I think it's just because it's such a beautiful print. Um, it's a classic. Yeah. Isn't it? They're timeless as well. Yes. Yeah. It's not vintage, it's not modern, it's just beautifully illustrated. Now, it says antique, but you see, you've got the bicycle in there as well. So if you've got someone that maybe goes to Amsterdam or just loves to bike about Lives a bit... in Cambridge. Yes, abso <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Somewhere flat. Uh, then this is absolutely perfect for them as well. So it, it does cover an awful lot. And because you've got lots of pots, it doesn't have to be someone with a, an extensive garden. It could be someone no. that just loves to have a few pots around I mean, the place. I mean, for instance, my mum... My mum lo loves, gar like, she doesn't love gardening, but she mm. loves gardens. Like, she does yes. visit gardens mm. and things like that. So I would say that this would be a really good one for her because it isn't too, too gardening-y. It has gardening elements, mm. but... Sort um, of a National Trust yeah, subscriber yeah, type, yeah. isn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cover your National Trust binder in this. Oh, yeah. May maybe you've got, um, yeah, like an ideas book. Yeah. For your garden or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, if you're planning, planning garden. Or maybe if you've just got a pocket that you keep all your seed packets in. Yeah, Then same. you could make it out of here. So pretty. 545 BCMY18. So you've got things like your four... I think why this is so popular is because it's unashamedly um, masculine and feminine. Yeah, yeah. So if you are a chap, if you are making something for a chap, then they're not going to be embarrassed because it's pink. No. You know, you've got bird baths in there, you've got manly tools, should you wish, but you've also got the more feminine element. So actually, maybe you're making for your grandparents. Yes, yeah. Then this is a perfect one for them. It, you know, it's, it's gentle. Yes, yeah, it definitely is gentle. As I say, it reminds me of kind of my childhood with my granddad and things like that kind of you know just pottering around in the garden mm. on a Sunday afternoon you know with the sunshine kind of out but it's not too hot just kind Lovely. of yeah reminiscent almost the fabric I love it when and things do that and I think that's why it's that antique 5.45 per half a metre BCMY18 but I, I do believe that when this material is gone it's gone so grab it while you can now <laughs> also very popular this hour has been of course the insole bright and that's what this hour is really all about so we wanted to bring you in so bright because we've brought this to air as a kind of um, an aside product. Yeah. It's been something that we've used it in, within us. Yeah, within. It hasn't ever been the star of a show no. just in itself. And we wanted to really show you, just to give you ideas. Um, and thank you ever so much for everybody that's got in touch saying that you've got it, you love it, you love the price point. When you start to compare with other sites, you know, you yeah. realize, start to realize what great value it is. If you've just joined us and said, since you might don't get it. Um, 
It's a great ad um, for less than six pounds. Pop it in your basket, give it a go. You've got insulating wadding on either side. It's needle punched so that it's going to be uh, more breathable. But you've also got that metal uh, through the middle of it, uh, which is just a really thin, thin layer. It's... You know when um, they run the marathon and then they get cold yeah. and they get the blankets to wrap around? It's kind of that very sort of similar. material, yeah, isn't it? Very similar to because that. that keeps the heat in. So this is keeping the heat in or the cold in. So yes. equally, if you're making lunch boxes and you want things kept cool, it will do that too. Obviously, don't put hot and cold in the same one. Well, no, that because you're going to even out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, have one for hot, one for cools, and do it that way. Complicated. That's why you need a pot holder. You yes. see, out yeah. of these. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I think there's, it's just, like you say, it's one of those things that if you put it in your basket, if you're not quite sure, get it home, have a play with it, mm. you'll be sold. Teenagers, hair straightener pouches, you know, mm. if you want to make a little gift for them, hair straighteners, we love the idea of making a weekend away bag yeah. and having a hair straightener pouch in there that you can just slot them in and you know that that heat's going to, it's not going to melt everything everywhere. Yeah. So a really useful useful item and just stood here think chatting about it yeah, we've, we've come, come up with so, with so many yeah. other ideas for it yeah yeah i think the ideas are endless we'll just keep coming up with more i love the idea of having a pocket on the end of a baby change bag that you can slot your formula, formula milk into yeah absolutely Fiona's I'm still on the gym cosy I'm yeah. still gonna <laughs> still <laughs> on the gym. The Sam is still on the gym you heard it in gym <laughs> here you heard it here first um fiona's made oven mitts excellent Brilliant. perfect Put the wadding on either side, make them super safe uh, because it is heat reflective, not heat resistant. That's the one thing to really... Have we got a picture? Can we show it? Do we have the technology? Oh, it's going to take a, take a second to show that. YQRW79, if you've not tried it, give it a go. Uh, we love the crinkle factor in here. Uh, yeah, again, the sensory, you know, making yeah. it maybe sensory blankets or uh, dementia sensory blankets, things like that. Do you want to see Fiona's, Fiona's picture? <gasps> Look at those, they're lovely. So professional. I love that, qu that wibbly quilting. Is that a technical term? Yeah, technical wibbling, yeah. Wh technical wibbling. Well done, Fiona, <laughs> on your technical wibbling. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty impressive, actually. Yeah, I thought that was really, really good. Really lovely, really professional. And that's why you're buying it in so bright, so that you can start to do all of these projects and so many more picnic blankets yeah. in your bags. Uh, keep things hot, keep things cold. Um, stadium seats as well. That's always yeah, going to be a favourite. Uh, then do grab it. It's just five ninety five. Pop it in your basket. Sammy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks I thought we bounced a few ideas around for you yes. at home. Yes. Uh, if you've got any more, do email us in. But next up, it's a no hassle tassel. Join us in a moment. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Here at the Sewing Quarter, we want to help you with your levels of sewing. Whether you're a novice or you've been sewing for years and years, we want this to be a fabulous learning curve for all of you. Whether it's making a little gift or making yourself a fabulous outfit, we will be working with some of the UK's biggest designers. You have to join us for that. Don't forget, our sister brands are some of the leading brands in the industry, with Love Patchwork and Quilting being rated top modern quilt title on the market. Today's Quilter has achieved market leadership in the traditional quilt sector. And finally, Simply Sewing was launched in February 2015 after noticing a gap in the market for beginners. Combined, we reach over 150,000 readers every month. The Sewing Quarter is a new inspirational sewing and quilting channel here to help educate our viewers with some of the best designers in the business. We hope to bring you some exciting demonstrations with some of the top industry experts. We're part of the Immediate Media family. Immediate Media is a fast-growing multi-platform company who operates some of the most loved brands across the UK. Our brands range from our first TV shopping channel adventure with Jewelry Maker to several successful magazines such as Simply Sewing, Radio Times, BBC Good Food and many more.
We've been working incredibly hard to set up and bring you our new exciting channel and we hope that we can help inspire you with new ideas and projects. When you spend £10 on your first purchase, you will receive this free sewing kit from the Sewing Quarter worth £14.99. Hello, welcome back to the Sewing Quarter. This hour we are tassel tastic. We are indeed. With no hassle tassels, courtesy of Victoria Pete. That is hello, by the way. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, that is pretty much all the tongue twisters that I'm going to say this hour. Let's hope so. I'm not even going to attempt. Now, tassels. Yes. Um, no hassle tassel. Why do we need them in our lives? Uh, because tassels are a really nice way of embellishing. Yes. They're nice. You yes. can add them. We've got today, I've got a cushion for you, but you could add them to the lampshades that we were making earlier. Yes, you of could course. use them on tie backs on a curtain. I've got them on. I've got a drop sided sofa at home, and that's got some big tassels on the end. Make a key ring. I've been to hotels where they've got tassel key rings. Yes. Fancy. Very fancy. Nice. Because I always lose my keys, I am known for it. There you go. Big fat key ring. This is brilliant. So this is a no hassle tassel. It's a nice chunky one, isn't it? Yes, I made a fat one. Um, I made a fat one. Uh, this is your large tassel maker, eleven ninety five. You will get the same size every time, and that's what I love yes. about this. So it's not a matter of um, if you want to make a few, having some that are different sizes. Yes, and because if you're making something like a cushion where I've put one on every corner, you want them of course to you do. look similar. Well, uh, no, exactly. <laughs> That's such yeah. a pretty embellishment on that on that um, cushion, though, isn't it? It just it just adds an extra something. If you're making your cushions to sell or anything like that, it's giving you that extra edge. It's giving you that extra interest. Yeah, it does. Makes you slightly different from everybody else. Absolutely. So if you want the large. Tassel maker, that's eleven ninety five. We've got different sizes for you, but it's nice and classy, isn't it? They're nice. They are smart. Yeah, You're right. I classy think so. is the right word. So Bit of class. See, um, I've used the large tassel maker. They're both adjustable. You can see that they've got these screws on them here, and that you can undo those and make larger tassels. Okay. So this is the large tassel maker on the small setting. Okay. And with that, I've made the tassels that I've used for the cushion that are that size. Out of the large tassel maker? Out of the large tassel maker. Oh, nice. And then I've made a medium-sized one on the medium setting. Very good. And then the really large one on the large setting. Excellent. And you can customise, if you like, if, the, if that's the right word. So you can make a thin tassel or you can make a fat tassel. It all depends on how many times you wind round the device. So the chunk is up to you. Yes, the chunk is your choice. Excellent. Um, on the actual packaging itself, and I always like to take a little look at packaging and see what they suggest. Yes. And on here, again, you've got that key. Nice. But then also, on your purse... It's just, you've got some lovely ideas. And, and in the background, they've made like a tassel bunting. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, let me show you. There's just, your tassel just bunting. It's yeah. just sneaky there. Why not, if you've, if, you're, uh, if you've got beads, why not add some beads on? But then also, on the back here, do you remember? <laughs> See, Child of the 70s. Was that mac macrame? Uh, what was mm, that? I can't remember what it was, but it was always spider plants. <laughs> yes. It was a bit that grow and grow yeah, and grow and grow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So here are the tassels. Oh, look at them. I want to put eyes on them and have them as little sort of 
sea creatures. They do look like little octopusy kind of yeah. things. Yeah. How do you make them? How easy are they? Right. Uh, the the good thing is is that ex instructions are excellent. I like like they were with the um, lamp lamp shades. Would these look nice around the lamps? Yes, they would look great. Look and whatever really colours you want, that's the joy of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Making your own colour, personalising to your own taste, yeah. in the own colour, the size that you want. I like them on curtain tie backs. Yes, I do, because they could be quite dull. So the instructions are really great. They tell you all about the different sizes that you can, how you can adjust the maker to different sizes. Right. And it takes you through exactly step by step what you need to do in order to get good results every time. So be confident that if you buy it, you're not just going, oh, what do I do with this piece of plastic? You know that actually you're going to be able to You've create You've been in my house results. when I've thrown away packaging mm -hmm. and not kept it all together. Don't do it. Well, they have two sheets. The other sheet's in French and German. So if you lose this one, just brush up on your German and you'll be fine. All I can say in German is, ich habe ein Kaninchen, ah. which isn't even true. I don't have a rabbit at all. <laughs> ich habe Hunger. I'm What's hungry. That? Oh, I'm always hungry. <laughs> So am I. Especially this time of the day. Um, right. OK. So, uh, what size tassel shall we make? What would um, you like? Big. Let's go I big. I want the biggest that you can possibly do. Large. So. Go big or go home, Victoria. Go big or go home. Yeah. So we're going to unscrew don't go home, these. Please, no, don't, go I don't know how yet. to make this. <laughs> and I'll have you awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> Good well, luck. I did give her the choice. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've un done those do. screws and then I've slid them apart right. and then you tighten up the screws again. So that's what it's widest. So that's setting. extended to its largest size. Excellent. Then you just flip it over because that will be important What later. are these arrows? Oh, they'll come into play later. Oh. So we'll see how they work in a Am minute. Am I being too previous? You are. But that's all right, we'll forgive you. Is that, ta is that going to be that big or is that half the size? It's actually half the size because you fold it. So it's half. going to end up being. Is this the, is this the big one? That is the big one. This is this is your big big daddy tassel, as I like to call him. <laughs> that that's your that's your curtain tie back, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Which are really expensive to buy. <laughs> they are. They are. I mean, like more than the cost of one of these machines. Oh, an awful lot more. An awful lot more. And we're today we're just using a um, a cotton based wool that you'd use for crochet or yeah. for knitting but you could use something more chunky you could use something really fine so you can use your wools and things like that as well yeah. yeah so we have on here there's a little slit on this side here and then there's another slit on the other side and these are to hold the beginnings of your wool but, okay um, as the instructions say if your wool is a bit slippery or is a bit fine just hold it with your finger and then I'm just going to put that in a bowl because it will roll easier and not off the table. And then you just hang wipe. on. That's that's a great top tip. I like my top tip of putting. Um, you do that quite often when you're knitting because sometimes you want to just get a bit more slack on your yarn, but you do that and then all of a sudden your ball's gone rolling off. So that just contains what a it. Top tip. Stole that out of the kitchen. And that's a free top tip for you. Yeah. Just yeah. Excellent. So, so we just wrap, is that it? We just wrap. I, for consistency purposes, when I was making the tassels for the cushions, I mm. counted how many wraps I did so that I knew that each tassel was going to be the same size. So I did 30 wraps of each one. I'm laughing personally because, firstly, because that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> and secondly, because I know the number of times I'd have to redo it because I you got interrupted. You must count. <laughs> must count halfway through. Or I'd forgotten oh. if I counted when I went round the bottom or when I went round the top. Yes, yeah, so am I counting here or am I counting yeah, here? Yeah, when did I but say either that way, I was going to count? <laughs> if we just go round and round. This big, large, fat one that I've shown you, I did 100 wraps around. 100 wraps. 100 wraps. I'm not counting this time. I'm just going to do lots. And I would just suggest not pulling the wool too taut. Right. It does generally get tight, but don't pull it too tight because then if you pull it and when you cut it, it'll spring back. Okay. And you'll lose some of your legs. Um, can I use my scraps of wool from the end of crochet projects, things yeah, like that? why not? You always end up with little bits left yeah. over and you think, what on earth am I going to do with all of those? Uh, so you could, you could knot them together and then you could have a variegated one. Yeah, you could have. And as long as the knots were at this end or this end, yeah. they get chopped off yeah. at a later stage. So, yeah, that would be absolutely Why not? fine. Yeah. So, we use this because you get 
consistent sizes. You can vary the size, but be consistent. Yes. So it's going to simplify it. The, the, it's held easily. Um, and also, it's got some real clever little design features um, for getting your scissors in, which we'll show you yes. later. Okay. Um, it's just a really well thought out piece of kit. So if you are after tassels for embellishments, for your home decor, um, even if it's just for a key ring, I love that idea. Mm. You're not getting this one back. Uh, <laughs> I quite like that one. Actually, I'll put orange around it. I, I love it. Yeah, nice. I know. Then... Um, then grab your tassel maker, 11.95. We've got them in various sizes. Shall we say that's enough? Let's stop there. It's just standardizing, isn't it? So when you stop, yes. you then place the yarn through the other hook. And then so you can it's, chop oh, it off. Oh, 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 just hang on, we just didn't quite get that shot. So through there, yep. under there. Just to hold it in place and stop it coming unraveling. Okay. Okay. Right, what we need to do now is you need to insert the hanging hook uh, loop and you need to tie it off at the, sort of at the same time. You can create just a loop using the same wool that you've used. You've not done that though, have you? No, not this time. On these ones I have done, but I've so been So if you want to use the same thread, that's what that looks like. And which is which is nice, yeah. lovely. And for, but, for this project, that's exactly what I needed. So how would you, if you just want a plain loop, you how just do you do just it? take a length, depending on how long you need it to be, and double knot. I, I think you need to do a double knot inside because when I was testing, I accidentally pulled one through. So make sure the knot is really okay. big at the bottom. Right. But you might want a short loop or you might want a longer one. That's entirely your choice. Yeah. Like with this um, the, on the packaging, they put the one with all the beads on. That you needed. There's a, one a with beads length. on. Oh, yeah. look, that's the key one. Yeah. Look at that. So there, in that instance, you'll want a longer loop. Oh, so. fab. But I've been shown this new tool that I've never seen before. Oh, no, this is my fault. Do you know what? Oh, oh. Yeah, OK, <laughs> so um, we have a box in the office, which is called Haley's Box, because it belongs to our sales manager, <laughs> Haley. And, uh, and I was let loose in... Uh, Rummage. Yeah. To rummage and I came up with this I was like this is amazing I've never seen it before what does it do and because we've got the threads we've had the threads on the eight o'clock show and because we're working with this um this is this is how this variegated thread was used so do you have to do the thread twisting now if we're going to use that with this so what uh yes I would if we're going to do a twisty one, I would have to do that now. Let's do twisting in a minute then, and let's finish the tassel now, and then we'll look at thread twisting in a minute. Okay, so we can just, I can just cut off an extra loop, which I thought I might have pre-done one. I have. Hey, hey! Look at that. From a different wool, so it's a different colour. I like, I like the contrast. We're going for contrast. Yes. Well, then you can see where it's coming through. Yes. I'm just going to cut a length to tie the middle. So this is your hanging in the contrasting thread. Actually, I'm really pleased you did it in a contrasting thread because now you can better. actually see. Where does that need to sit? So what am I, I'm going to do it backwards way from the, what the instructions say because I always found it a bit fiddly. So I'm just going to pop this underneath mm -hmm. this mid this mid section that you've wound. Do you have to go underneath that so you're edge going, section as well? No, you're going just underneath the part that you've wound. Don't right. go underneath here. And then I'm just going to lay it flat. Okay. The hanging loop itself has to poke inside all of this part. Oh, right. So you poke the knot in. The important thing is that the knot sits to this side. Okay. Of so the closest part to you. Gonna, yeah. And just hide it in there. A little bit. You're burying it. Burying it in. And then we're just going to tie this in the middle. Why are you burying it? Um, so that it's easier in the next step. That's going to make right. a lot of sense. So 11 95 sort of for your tassel maker. And I could do, oh no, I might be alright. I was going to say I might do with a spare finger, but actually I might be alright. I'm just going to tie that tight. It's best to use something that's quite strong. You don't want something that's going to undo itself. Okay. 
or snap when you pull it. Don't use sewing machine thread or something. Okay. Because that will snap. Right. So I've just tied that round once and then I'm going to tie around again. So, and this is, because this is, this is going to keep it all together. Yes, all nice and snug. So your no hassle tassel, large tassel clover maker. What, clover maker? Clover tassel maker, maker by clover. <laughs> yes, that's that's what I'm trying to say there. Um, what you'll see in a minute is, is, for me, the reason why this is, this is so good, because it does make everything easy. You're going to get the same size every time. Every time. Um, and so that's really important if you're doing home decor then it's the difference isn't it between it, it looking a bit rubbish and actually looking the wow fabulous. factor it is the absolutely little touches make so a let's see this wow factor okay so we've tied the middle so they're all nice and secure mm -hmm. here now we need to cut the ends of the tassels and the device itself has a little groove in it yes in here that you can slide the ends of your scissors into. And this is why this is so great. Because then you know that you're cutting exactly in the middle. And I like to hold a little bit here just to stop everything flying around. And that's why you are getting um, even tassels. So because otherwise, when you've tried to hand make them without this device, then invariably what happens is you have to go through and hair cut and trim everything. <laughs> we will be doing some trimming, but, but not to the extent that you end up no. with one sort <laughs> of really tiny tassel. <laughs> or like, you know, when you have to trim your own fringe, just and, goes uh, wrong. and what you know and so yeah it, it's not level this is this is helping with that yes it does help it's and taking that your hassle hand. out of tassels okay so then that comes away from your device excellent so now we have hairy bear it looks like is it was it cousin it <laughs> or, or or the thing mm. there it is there's a bit so now you've relocated the hoop, uh, the loop. Hang on, let me just show where we're oh. at here. So that was your contrast thread. That's a big old tassel. And then just give it a little shake out. I saw a dog quite similar, Crufts. <laughs> Crufts with the, you know the ones with the fabulous hair? Yes, it was it the Duluxy type dog? No, or no, no, the, the one that looks like it on. has um, like dreadlocks. Oh, I didn't, I missed so that one. So these are the tassels. So you've, and all three of those sizes use made just from the one tassel maker, your large tassel maker. I assume that one tassel maker just made one size of tassel. No, but it's it always good if you're buying a tool that it's as versatile as yeah, possible. Yeah, this is. Okay. Okay, so we need to rearrange a little bit. Just make sure that this loop is sort of in the middle as much as possible. The instructions suggest using a comb. I wasn't totally sure about using a comb. Well, maybe not a like a um, maybe not a narrow one. <laughs> maybe like a wider one. A wide tooth. Do you Afro remember? Comb. Um, well, yeah. Or, or when we the, used to have perms in the eighties. Yes, and you used to use your hair with them. Yeah, one of those. I so wanted a perm. I did have one, but I wanted a spiral perm, not just a normal one. A spiral perm. Amazing. Back in the day. Excellent. I was very young. I was obviously too young for a perm. Clearly too young. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us for No Hassle Tassels. Uh, we're just reminiscing about bad haircuts and hairstyles that we've had. And now, um, I had a question about the cotton that we've used. If you'd like to know the cottons that we've used, it's a crochet cotton, it's a crochet yarn. Um, and of course, you, you know, it's, it's a lovely just cotton. 345, and this is your crochet cotton yarn. Um, SHGQ01 for your just cotton yarn. Made in the EU, 100% cotton, 50 grams there. Um, it's 170 yards, which is 155 meters. And from this- That's a lot. From this one here. Now this is your zaphire color. Ooh. And the color I've used is starlight. And this was a 50 gram ball. And from that I've made eight small tassels, mm -hmm. one medium sized tassel, and I've still got some left. Yeah, and so that one, there you go. Again, 345, whichever color. That's the, the, the handle of the tassel, that's in the color for the handle of the tassel. And then we've got another one as well, which is sort of a baby blue, rather lovely. I think that was called Blue Layette. Blue, yeah, Blue Layette in a sort of French. 
French. It's a little bit French to go nice. with our French named uh, fabrics. Petit Francais. Uh, yeah, see, you're not great with French either. 345 <laughs> F0G, uh, no, FOGQ42. Apparently letters are an issue for me as well today. <laughs> Doing well. Okay, so. Okay, so we've rearranged. Oh, just oh. to say, sorry, you said you did how many tassels yes, out so of that? I've done eight of the small ones, which are on the corners of the cushion. Yep. Uh, so now I've got four more, mm -hmm. and I've got the medium-sized one, plus I've still got that left. That's how much is still left, all for 325 so just so that you show how much you've got left, that's how much is left after nine tassels. And that was out of a ball that started like that size. Yes, so the, the navy blue ones, we've awesome. managed to get two large jumbo tassels and still have, looks like... About half left. Half, I'd say, yeah. Go for a half. Without scales, we'll guess a half. Scales, yes. that would be very technical. I did have scales out. Did you? Well, I didn't want to run out. That would have been a disaster at home going, um, I don't have enough wool. Amazing. Right. Uh, this next bit, I'm not going to lie, is tricky. OK. It's just about getting it right. You need to decide how you would like your tassels wrapped. I've used the nice orange on the jumbo one and I've used white on the other ones. I've okay. used white on these ones because I thought it went well with the cushion cover. Nice. Yes, it does. So the choice is yours. Is that one of the threads that we had off the earlier shows? Yes, it's one of the DMC threads, so that's a 722. Well, out of the 100, 100 pack? Um, pass, yes. I don't know. I do believe it is. But there was a white as well. There was a, there was a white? Was this yeah, out of a, a massive great big pack? Um, no, it was out of a little pot in the corner of the room. <laughs> oh, was it now? <laughs> I see. So well, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to let someone else tell us whether it was. Which one that was, OK. OK, the instructions, again... Are very clear and show you how to do this. You have to make a little loop um, for the thread to go over. Okay. But the instructions are clear. So you've got to have the thread coming down and it loops round and back on itself. Okay. Think like a motorway exit. Right. That's a good way of thinking of it. Yeah. It's got to go over. Okay, get the loop big enough. And the instructions tell you the minimum size that you need to cut in order to wrap. But right. If you wanted a much wider wrap at the top, yeah. just use more. Just use more. Just use more. Okay. So I'm going to hold the top and pinch here. It tells you at the top somewhere. Oh, here. Making the head of the tassel. Yeah, so it shows you. So you've got all of your photographs on here. to show you how to do it down there. So all photographic for you yep, so, so that you can top really one see. is the, the motorway. Yeah, motorway, <laughs> motorway exit there. <laughs> yeah, because you have to come off and then go round. Yeah, come round. And then if you go to the top of the next column. That one. On the, no, on the up, 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 up. Here, oh no, here. It then shows you wrapping all the way round. Ah, I see. So now I've gone round the top of the tassel and over that loop. So I'm covering the ends of that loop. OK. Why do you need to keep that loop down there? Because when you get back to this point... I'll just use a needle. When you get back here, you've wrapped around enough and you've not got much left. Mm -hmm. You need to go through that loop with the end... Right. ..of... <laughs> So is this um, is this is this like when you you kind of do a little knot yes um, to to secure your stitching? So I've just pulled that through yeah. the knot. You can do that with your fingers, but I find this it is easier kind of to a vital part, isn't it? it? Because this is going to be what holds it all <laughs> so in place. It's unraveling and yeah. going everywhere. So now that I've done that, you can then pull against each other. Oh, the beginning and end of the motorway. Clever, and, and it pull disappears those together, and it disappears underneath where you've wrapped. Excellent. And then you just trim those bits off. And I'm not sure if I've got tiny scissors. Well, it, if only we had a, oh, a, yes, a channel here. with scissors. Ta-da! Ah, there See? we go, mini snips. You knew they'd be here. And snip those off. And that is your tassel. Yeah. Excellent. So this no. is... There you go, that's, that's what we're looking at. So you can then you can make you can then 
trim off the ends to make it all neat at the end, or you can go for a wild look. I quite like the wild look. I'm not gonna lie, let me show you the wild look. So this is the wild look. But I, yeah, no, I kind of like that. But what they suggest too tiered, to trim yeah. is that you take a piece of paper and I've taken the shortest, because you can see they're different levels, mm. different lengths. Mm. I've taken the shortest length and made a piece of paper rectangle right. that size and I've just rolled it up inside the paper and trimmed the ends off. Oh, great idea. So I've gone. Shall I do that now? Yeah, go on then. You do that. And whilst you do that, I'm going to give you the details for the smaller one. We've got a, um, a, a large one and the small one. So the small one is here as well. So whilst you roll that, this is the small one. Nice colour as well. So you're always going to know mm. which one's which. Uh, so this is 11.95. So this makes three, four um, and five centimetre tassels. You can see where you need to have those three, four, five. And that's going to give you, of course, that sizing, um, making tassels with your favourite yarns. OK, so you literally wrap it in so paper. I have wrapped the paper round to create a sleeve, Yes, if you like. And then that gives you a point where you can cut so you don't end up like your fringe, ah, going shorter and shorter and shorter. Done. Wax a piece of paper, paper underneath, paper my, paper uh, underneath my, uh, my fringe. It's a hair bowl, a bowl cut, isn't it? Yeah. And then if you just get some scissors and start cutting through, and the larger the tassel, the slightly more difficult that is. But if you just cut little by little as you and rotate it round. Then you'll work your way through. Then you eventually work your way through. Don't try and go all in one go because oh, no. you'll just never get through it. It is like giving a haircut, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, or, obviously, don't ever get... This is... Yeah, everyone's now saying don't ever let Natasha no. cut your hair. Don't. Um, my poor dog that came in on Sunday, Arthur. Aww. I cut his hair. Good job he had a coat. So no one could see oh, what dear. a bad job I'd done on it. No, that's when you realise paying dog groomers is worth is every absolutely, penny. Is absolutely, yeah, worth, worth uh, every penny, isn't it? Um, OK, so uh, this is your large tassel maker. This is your small tassel maker. This will make three, four and five centimetre tassels. And this one will make, well, the largest size that we've just made now, uh, which is that sort of size. Are you ready for the reveal? Oh, the big reveal. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Actually, you can keep if you're making a few to store, just keep them wrapped. Yes, and then they won't get tangled. No, very handy. Take that off. Oh, nice, Ta very nice. And actually, I wonder what it would look like, and I didn't quite get the chance to do it. Is you know how yarn is wrapped, lots of strands wrapped yes. together, whether you teased those out. Maybe that's why they say um, to uh, to comb it. Maybe. Maybe that's that was quite why. early in the process, but I think that would make a really big yeah. fluffy one. Pop a proper fl fluffy, I think that fluffy, would look fluffy really one. nice. Now that is your tassel maker. So that's eleven ninety five for your large tassel maker, JPGQ twenty one. Let's wrap some Twist some, twist. twist some yarn, because I'm very aware that we've got this beautiful twisted yarn here and I want to know how to make it, quite frankly. There. So we're going to have a look at this. Now this is an implement that we've never brought to air before. It Ooh. is brand, brand new. In fact, I don't even know how it works, so I'm glad you're here. <laughs> but this is, this is so that you can create your own two-tone Wraps. Cord. Cord. And actually, baker's twine is... Yes. You're ma basically making your own baker twine yeah. in the colour that you want. Yes. But with beautiful threads. Yes, because I've used the same threads just to coordinate with what we've done. And this is your handy thread twister, again by Clover. They've, they've got all the ideas, haven't they? Fab. Uh, now, maybe you bought the 100 yarn pack that we had on the mm. first show, and actually you want to make variegated threads. This is the way to do it. Now, first of all, you can untwist your threads. So if you only want to use, because obviously skeins come as six threads yes. twisted, um, you, could, you can untwist. Yes, because pull that's, the three few yeah. threads out. That's always a thing for me. And then retwist. So you can still get six wow. strand or even just a two. It depends how fine you want to yeah, do it. But show really us how nice. this works. Because we've gone so, with just your six strand Yes, threads. I've just taken two pulls from the skein. Mm -hmm. um, again, the instructions are really great um, from Clover, step by step. The one thing that you've got to bear in mind is that you have to know which way your threads are wound. Because some are clockwise and some are anti-clockwise. Um, because that makes a difference as to which way you use the device. Okay. So I've cut two lengths that are approximately the same size. Well, that's as to whether or not you wind them or unwind them, yes. doesn't it? So if you want to use it to unwind so uh, you don't get knotted. No, it depends oh, because um, 
when you wind this, you either wind clockwise or anti-clockwise. Mm. So it depends on how they're wound in the first place as to whether they go together. Yeah, yeah, but so if you've got one and you want to untwist it... Mm. You're being practical, aren't you? Yeah, no, I am. Only because I always oh. get knotted. You know, if, I, if I'm yes. doing... If I'm using just three strands for a blanket stitch or something on some yeah. felt, then I always get it knotted and it's a bit of a mess. And it's a pain. So let's see how this works. So the, this has got two little hooks... Mm -hmm. on these white knobbly mm -hmm. bits. So I've tied the yar the embroidery thread underneath those hooks. Mm -hmm. You then hold um, the ends where you've knotted them together and you just, oh no, together. I'm trying to do it so that you can see on the camera, but it's not very easy. Um, you hold these threads apart so they don't actually twist together at this point. You're so twisting I'm looking them. at that thinking that I, I You're thinking what I've is Victoria done it wrong? doing? She's absolutely bonkers. Well, you know, you said that. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> uh, it does tell you in the instructions here, and I'm not very good at reading upside down. You were amazing at reading upside down. It tells you how many times you need to do what I'm doing with my thumb. Right. According to how many bits of thread you've got and how long it is, it tells you pretty much how to do it. But I think once you've done it a few times, you'll get a bit of a guy, a bit of a feel so, for what you're doing. So th we're still, you see, we're, uh, this is going to, is this going to have a <laughs> big baffled. reveal? No, I am, because it looks like you, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Well, let's have a look. Let's undo. Oh. Oh. No, it's not going to do it. Oh, no. Have we done it the wrong way around? Oh. Is it that? Oh. Oh, the one, the one I did it, here. Yeah, look, no, I promise I've done it before, it? and Do it worked look at absolutely the instructions? perfectly. Because I know that we just threw this at you this morning. This is what will happen. Poor oh, Victoria, we've thrown this at her. Oh, I was doing the wrong thing. Oh, she's doing the wrong thing. There we go. Oh, so it just it then just it then twists, twists oh. itself back round. So you had done it right. Yes, I had done it right. I was just doing the next step incorrectly. I needed a memory jogger. So the amount of times oh, nice. that you twist it depends on how tight you end up being. So that's what you've ended up with. Oh, lovely. It's a nice twisted cord. And then you can take that off the little hooks and tie it up. So then that is brilliant. It's clever, isn't it? It is really clever because I don't know otherwise how I would do it. Oh, it would And be... then if you've got the thread organiser that we had off the first show, you can just wrap that and you've got, yes. you've got it done. Yeah, you could do a use... longer length. The limit is really how far apart you can you hold one end and swivel could. but you could employ a friend if you could hold at that end and i'll swivel at this end <laughs> you can make a really long length beautiful nice so then you know you can just you can just wrap it around an old spool and keep and it you've got your time. very grated thread that's great Nice little piece of kit there, um, sixteen ninety five. Pop it in clever. your basket. Very clever. Good. But then you see, you can make all of your own threads because actually mm. these these can be expensive to get. Yeah, they can, and, then, and it's nice to be able to coordinate. Yeah, properly. And the colours that you want. So there we go. This is this is where it's been used within within the tassel. It just gives it gives that variety. In fact, let me hold it against so you can really see on there. 1695 KHGQ48. Awesome. Brilliant. What are we doing next then with uh, these? Right. I thought I would show you actually applying the tassels onto a cushion. Why not? Let's do it. So we have. So this is the cushion here. Lovely. And we're using one of the other prints in the range. Um, we've had the Papillon range before but i haven't seen this fabric can you just yeah go. just look at this it's lovely isn't it really, really bright really pretty With bright colors oh uh, this is going to look great in a kid's bedroom in your camper van caravan summary it does doesn't it mm. oh maybe you want to do your, your outdoors your outdoorsy things so it's this it's this here it's the florals so which is kind of taking the detailing from the butterfly one yes it's the little detail from mm. it so if i just hold it with so this is that's the butterfly one but you see you can see that you've got the flowers 
from the larger design there and because it's part of the same range it's taking those flowers and put them in almost into a ditzy ditzy print and this is the one there you go and I think it's nice when you've got so, so many bright colours is that you can choose different accents and create a completely different look. Yeah. So Five. you think we've made the blue tassels, but if you use the light blue, that would look different. Or pink, pink or anything like that, again. or the baby blue in there. Or you've the got orange. the baby blue. Nice. Uh, so 5.45 for your floral on cream, and that's per half a metre. Excellent. So where do we go? What do we do? Uh, going to insert a zip. Oh, straight in there. Now you've um, put a, an, an over edge stitch. Yes, because on I was there. travelling. I did this at home and brought it with me. I thought okay. I'm just going to overlock the edges so you can use pinking shears instead. Um, things with the inside of a cushion is that it's not like clothing in that you don't take it off and put it on again all the time. So the, the insides don't actually get much wear and tear, but I still like to finish the edges. Well, so, it depends if you have to wash them, doesn't it? You yeah, know. if they get a bit grotty, then it's nice to be able to wash them. So I tend to either overlock or zigzag or pinking shears, whatever I feel like at the time, how much time yeah. I've got to hand. Uh, so um, I've, we're using a 40 centimetre cushion insert yeah. for this example, which is 16 inch. Mm -hmm. I like to create my cushion covers exactly the same size as the insert. It's nice and squidgy then, really doesn't it? firm. Um, I was just thinking, you know, we're talking pinking shears. Obviously, mm -hmm. we've got pinking shears on the website, but we've also got a rotary cutter, which has our, a, a wave, oh, yes. a wave blade mm -hmm. as well. I've not tried but that yet. But we've also got um, the, well, we'll talk about my favourite thing in a minute. I know, I is, saw that arrive. And have I'm you thinking, seen it? No. Oh. It looks shiny and new. Can I, can I show you? Have we got some fabric that I can cut into? Oh, good. we've got some up there. Hang on. Can we pop this to one side? Because yes, I've got to show you this because I absolutely love it. Right. I am rubbish at cutting straight lines. <laughs> OK, it, that Ooh. just is a thing. I am. Um, and I'm just going to go and get this. So if you are like me, <gasps> I know, I know. And I'm going to cut this salvage. Uh, and I'm going to just there you go. fold that along the salvage there now. The beauty of this is... Oh, should, we, should, we, should we dance? I'm just going to sweep. Oh. <laughs> sweep all that away. Sweep so I'm just going to fold this in half. You can cut up to eight layers of cotton with this. I love eight. this. Yes, eight. See, that's great. It is, isn't it? So if you're thinking about all of your scraps that you've got, and maybe, um, you know, you want to uh, cut your two and a half inch design strips mm -hmm. here we go so first thing i'm going to do is uh even this up okay so i'm just going to line this up on my cutting mat there or i'm going to line it up along along those edges along there now they're black with a white line so they're always going to show up and I'm just going to line that up on the bottom of my fabric. See, that's a challenge with some rulers, is that you can't quite see. Yeah, but it's no, not good enough contrast. It is. So then I know that I'm going to be cutting perpendicular. OK. If you have issues with rotary cutters... Some people don't like the angle. The, no, and some people can't grip either. For this, Victoria, um, you press down. There's no grip involved. You press down... You put your fingers in there, the blade isn't engaged until you press down and you push away. Wonderful. Now that was through two layers. But it will do eight. That is now absolutely straight. Now if I want to do a two and a half inch strip, I merely spin that around. I've got inches both ends. Um, I then look, okay, two and a half inches. There's my two inch. I uh, put that line up there. There's my half an inch. I measure that. I can do it with my left hand if I want. I'm not. I'm right-handed. Oh, so no normally, down. with a rotary cutter, you can't do left hand right-handed. Nope. Whereas that, that isn't you shifting. Can. Now I could have done it if I'd have wanted to. I could, and that is your two and a half inch strip. Cut. Done. Fab. But do you know what? Actually, maybe <laughs> I want to cut through lots of layers. So that's four layers. That's eight layers. Oh, go for it. I'm going for it. No, I'm going for it. OK. I'm going to spin this around. And I'm going to 
ba -ba -ba -ba. measure so you can do it this way as well so if you feel happier measuring that way line up my uh, two and a half inch along there that's all I know. Again, I put my fingers on there, press down on there, which means that fabric's not going anywhere. If you want to have the bulk of the fabric underneath, then you can line it up that way. I press down. As soon as I press down, that engages that blade. Yes, you so can it's see safe it to you. It. Yeah, you can hear it. And you hear it cut. This is through eight layers. I'm just push away. There's no grip. There's no nothing. I push away, cut. Fabulous. Eight layers of fabric and what kind of it, blade is in that that is a fiskars blade it's a rotary like cutter a normal blade cutter. a normal 45 mil blade but look at that so even if you've got a great if you've got one of the really wide lengths and you want to cut selvage to selvage it doesn't matter you just fold it and that's that done so and also all of those fabric strips that you've got now if you are um if you are a quilter Yes. And you want to cut at a 45 degree angle. Oh. Or if you want to make your bias binding, yes. you want to cut at a 45 degree angle, that's absolutely fine too because you just line it up on the 45 degree. Oh, tassel's in the way again. Hang on, I've got to work out. There we go. So I would line it up. There's my 45 degree angle there. So I can line it up and I can follow that through. So if I want, actually I need to spin that around, don't I, that way. And you've got your markers at line the it up as well. on my 45 hang on which way around do i need to do that i've got to work this out on my head on. what about using that end that? yeah oh yeah that end that's going to help isn't it yeah, if i do it I that way i just noticed that they were on there so you've got your 45 degree marker so i need to do that along there and then that's it got my head around it i shall rearrange yes it's, well, like, it's like a big like wedding, wedding dress. dresses isn't it <laughs> yeah. rearrange that under there so if you want to do your bias binding make sure there that's right. it Line it up on your 45 degree angle there. And again, that blade hasn't cut because I haven't pressed it down to engage. Lined up on my 45, push down, cut away. Ta -da. 45 degree angle. But I want to do this so that I've got it um, in a two and a half inch strip. So I spin it around and I go, okay, I line this edge up with my two and a half inch which is there. That has given me two and a half inch bias. Fabulous. So much quicker. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Wonderful. Done. Very good. Now, is it heavy? It's not. No, it's really lightweight oh, to no, use. It's really light. And if you're cutting your blocks, then that's absolutely perfect. You're cutting your blocks for your uh, quilting, anything like that. It's six and a half inches. Now, there is something extra with this. I know, I know, I know. If that okay. wasn't enough. <laughs> I know. You Ooh. get five blades with this. Okay. And you get this little device. This is a no touch blade tool. Safety um. is paramount. So what you do is you slot that onto your blade that's live and then you pull that down, which then releases the next blade so that you then put the next blade on. You haven't touched a blade, you haven't cut yourself, you haven't hurt yourself in any way, but you have a fresh, sharp blade. Because that's always on a little bit daunting. It is. Mm. It is. This is coming with it. Now, this is, this is normally thirty one ninety five. I think, just by itself okay. and worth every penny because you know what it is like when you've cut yourself. It takes yeah. you out of action for a few days. Oh, so this is that. coming in conjunction with the cutter. So you've got your cutting mat and you've got this for sixty four ninety five. Brilliant. It's a fabulous, fabulous piece of kit. Now this cutting ruler here is six and a half inches, yeah. so that's going to give you a six inch finished block. Yes. If you're cutting, if yes. you're a quilter. Yeah. And it is twenty four centimeters inches. Uh, inches rather. I was just thinking I have to give this in centimeters, and I don't know what it is. No. Um, it is a fabulous piece of kit. This is on my list. I'm not surprised. This is my I next love it. item. That's great. Isn't it? Mm. Isn't I it? I love it. And that cha blade changer is brilliant. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you think of all the times that you make handles for bags. You cut handles for bags. You want um, a scrap project where you want where you want to do a log cabin out of your scraps. Yeah. Now you can cut. At the end of a project, those little scraps, cut them into two and a half inch strips. You want to do your bias binding? No problem. That's it. That's it. Sixty-four ninety-five. Fab.
We digress. I love it. But absolutely but for a good love reason. It. That's brilliant. But you see, that's just it. You can cut your straight lines for your cushions. Yeah. Because oh, I, you know, then you can cut your, your front, you can halve your fabric. Mm. I like that you can actually cut on both sides. Yeah, with a lot right of time right where you're, when you're moving fabric around because you've cut this side, then actually you want to cut from the other way and you're moving mm -hmm. fabric around. Whereas actually, that's really easy. It is great, and the blade doesn't engage until you push down. Mm. So even if you've got it up the, that other end, you just, just slide, slide it back. back and down. And because it's on that grid, it's on that sort of uh, train track, if you like, yeah. it's keeping it straight. You're always going to get that straight thing. So yeah. if you're like me and you shy away from using rotary cutters and rulers, because quite frankly, I'm rubbish at it, <laughs> and either the ruler slips or I slip, and it just I waste material, I waste time, I get frustrated, frustrated. I don't want to do the project in the end, or I steer clear of it, or I want beautiful bags to make, but I know that I've got to cut strips of fabric for handles, mm. I don't do it. Yeah. Now you can it gives you the confidence. Done. It's like with the tassel makers, they allow you to get better, more consistent results. That's what we want, isn't it? And mm. then if you're getting a better result, if it's easier to use, if it's fun to use, I love using yeah, this. Great. That's why I was like, <laughs> right, Victoria, out the way. I'm showing this. The way you, know. you, it's <laughs> mine. It's mine. But it I'm is because turn. it's fun to use, yeah. and anything that is fun to use is going to get you into your into your craft room. Is going to get you sewing. Is going to get you doing mm. all these things. If when, no, not if, when, when I get one of these, I will no longer shy away from cutting my own squares for, for, for patchwork quilting. Yeah, makes it so easy. Because I, I can make sure that I cut them consistently and perfectly. Not only that, but I can cut eight at a time. Mm, eight! That's a lot. Let me cut you. Go on, cut again. I, I, sorry about this. I didn't know if we wananted this fabric, but I've... Um, <laughs> not anymore. Um, no. <laughs> Right, come See, on. And a lot of, thing, a lot of things, that, um, a mistake that beginners often make when they're using a rotary cutter is that one, they cut backwards and forwards. Oh, no, don't do that. And that's not good. It no. creates a really terrible edge. And yeah. they also forget, and it's hard to learn, is that they don't push the rotary cutter towards the ruler and they'll accidentally cut that's me. out to the right. That's what I do. It's so easy to do. Whereas actually this takes that away because your blade is attached to yeah. your ruler. And right, you give me a get, size. Give me um, a quilting like size. A, um, let's go a six by six. I'm just gonna clear that off, okay? Now a six by six, so. I'm going to set a watch. spin that around, Time. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to line that up so I know that I've got my six inch mark there. I'm lining that up there. I'm gonna cut with my left hand. I don't wanna actually- Get you this ambidextrous. Yeah, there like that. Now I'm gonna spin it. I'm gonna tidy up these edges down here. No, you don't want your selvage, do you? No. So spin that round. And I'm gonna line again, use one of these lines to line up, make sure that I am absolutely straight on there. But it also means that I can get in, because I've got that line there, I know exactly where it's gonna cut. Ready, steady, go. Ready, steady, whoosh. Can I show you just how little I've wasted of the actual material on there? There's my selvage, and look, you can just see just a tiddly, tiddly, tiny bit there, and it's cut it perfectly. Um, now, I will spin it. And then because by, by I can, doing that, you're not moving the fabric, and there's no chance of nope. all those eight layers. Yep. When it's one layer, it's not so bad, but when you've got eight layers, by not moving that fabric, you're removing that margin of error. Left hand, ready, Go steady, for it. whoosh, <laughs> done. Six inch, done. The blade doesn't engage until I push down. There's no mm. grip. If you struggle with grip, none of that. And I've spun this over the top of the fabric. I'm not manhandling the fabric, so it's not mm. fraying. I'm not having to quit, keep spinning things around, turning it around, yeah. relining everything up, hoping. That is a perfect six inch square, not just one. How many folds did you do? Two, three, Four with ease, I could have done mm. eight. Yeah. Jane from Norfolk's messaged in. She said she received her cutter yesterday <gasps> and is already the best thing she has. Oh, good. If I could wow. high five you for that, Jane, I a high five, Victoria. Go on, then. Yes. Uh, good work. I, I am very passionate about this, as you can see. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Because I love it. And you know what? A really silly thing, but I really like. It's got holes for hanging. Yeah. 
hanging and holding, they make a difference for the way that you store these things as well. If you can hook it up. Now you see, be careful of the blade, but let me spin this so that you can see that blade there. Can you see that isn't engaged? So even as you move that around, you're safe. You know, that's not gonna cut my finger, but when I push it down, that's when it becomes mm. engaged. That is when you need to be careful. So that will move on there and you won't accidentally cut yourself. Mm. It's only once you apply the pressure from the top that it engages. So this is safe to have in your craft room. It's safe to use. What other projects do you think we could use this for? Oh, bag making. When you're mm. cutting bags, because people always think about quilting rulers for quilting purposes. Yes. But actually, they're so useful for when making bags as well because you're cutting large rectangles and you need to know that you're cutting straight. So mm. bag making is great. It's also good for home decor. So if you're making cushions, you're also cutting squares. It's not just a quilting thing. It's not. No, it's not. Absolutely. I'm going to line this up. No, see, I, didn't, I should have just cut underneath. that. Yeah, I should have cut all that edge off, shouldn't I? I'm going to... Oh, no, no, Actually, no. Let's, let's pretend it's back together a little bit. I'm going to line this up on my 45-degree angle. Where did I this leave that? Down, down here. here. My 45-degree angle. So I want... You see, I will get the, I'll get my head okay. round this. Which way round? So that will cut across that Yeah. Way. Through like oh, that. You go down on there. Line it up. You can come backwards, that hasn't cut. Mm -hmm. Apply the pressure, cut. Ooh. Done. So actually, if I wanted to do with those squares, if I wanted to cut that at a 45. Or in half. Or in half, just in half. Yeah, just line it up, top and bottom. Line up, line up. Apply the pressure, cut through. Look at that, look at that point. Gosh, look at that point. There, look at that. That's how sharp this blade is. That's how perfect this is. So if you want to do your quilting and you want to get your great points, that is perfect. Mm. Very useful bit of kit. Isn't it? Mm. I like that. It's good. It's great. You've got 30 degrees, you've got 60 degrees. It's all on there. It's just a pimped up version of a quilting ruler. Because you've got everything yeah. that you would have on a normal quilting ruler. Yeah. Plus you've got the hanging and you've got the, the track and the blades. I wonder how narrow, because you would cut off your dog ears. I'm just thinking you'd cut off dog yes. ears, wouldn't you? Oh, so I wonder how narrow you can cut. Is that about, hang on, let's measure that. Let's measure mm -hmm. this so that it is a quarter of an inch. Done. Quick. Done. Oh. So you can even cut your dog ears off. Perfect. Grab it. Um, sorry, we digress. You were making That's cushions. Right. Isn't as exciting as that, though. There we go. We've got a few minutes now to do the cushion. Sorry, a few minutes to do a cushion. <laughs> Fine. Sorry. Fine. Sorry. Fine. Sorry, sorry. Oh, we have only got 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so do you need to talk about fabrics as well in this hour? No, we're all good. We're, we're good. all good. Yes. Okay, so um, with the zip, because I'm not going to get a zip done in 10 minutes. Okay. Um, but with the You've tassels. Got five minutes. With the tassels. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, you, can, you can add these to an envelope backed cushion or a zipped cushion. Um, whatever you like. When you attach them, I think the safest thing to do is to take one of your cushion panels mm. and lay your tassels... Oh, on the inside? On the inside, in the corner. OK. Uh, you need to bear in mind what your seam allowance is. Mm -hmm. If I'm making a cushion with a lapped zip, which is like this one on here... A what is zip? A lapped zip, so a little bit covered, if you like. Right, so that's on here... Oh, I'm going the wrong way, all back to front. So it's got like a little part that covers part yeah. of the zip. Um, I use a one and a half inch, uh, one and a half centimetre or five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Right, okay. So you would just need to mark on, and I don't have a measuring tool. So if we say, I would mark with an air erasable pen, for mm -hmm. example, the point of 
the seam allowance. Okay. So I'd say five eighths of an inch is in here. Yeah, so that point there is the point at which you would pivot when you're sewing your cushion cover. Yesterday we had um we had a we had a brilliant tool that that did all your seams. It's called a seam right. Oh, that's exactly oh, what I needed. Yeah, just no, then. It is, I was just thinking that's exactly what you needed. Check out the website for that because we still had some left. It sold out first time we brought it to work. I'm not surprised. They're really really yeah. useful. Yeah, I think it's so, 95 or something. But pop, have a look on the website. Search for it there. Um, on this example here, I've not put the tassels right up close because that's not going to work. I've put them about half an inch. Okay. So you would attach that. Use some clips or some pins. Uh -huh. and then just make sure that's coming off at a diagonal point yeah. from your corner and then just baste that in place in the corners okay because you don't want them to move, move around when you come to do right sides together because if you're doing right sides together this is really bulky and yeah. doesn't sit flat yeah and it's easy for these to get out the way uh, in the way yeah so. Could you sew them on afterwards or not? Um, if you're worried, if that, if you're thinking, I don't want to sew around that, is it possible to? You could do. I'm just trying to think about how you would make that look neat because you've got this loop. Yeah. To attach that on. Okay. But otherwise, just sew around like you would. Yes, and just make sure. And when you're sewing a zipped cushion, I always make sure that you open the zip. Yes. So that when you get back to the other side. You haven't got a closed cushion that's inside out. But when it's open, as you're sewing, you can put your hand in and just make sure that some of these little tassel pieces, fronds, uh, I want to yeah. call them fronds. Why not? Why not? That they don't get accidentally caught in the seam. So just stick your hand inside the cover and move those parts of the tassel out the way as you sew round. Perfect. And, and uh, as you say, you know, that tassel, the colour works beautifully with the fabric. Yeah, it just picks out the, the blues within the print. Uh, it actually makes it more sophisticated, doesn't it? Because that could be quite a girly print by itself. But as soon as you add a, a dark blue tassel on it, mm. it, 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 it makes it an older fabric. Yeah, not everyone likes everything This is certainly a teenage fabric. Girly. Yeah, no. So, yes, this it is just brilliant. smartens it up. But it's bright, it's fun. See, you know what I thought of when I made this cushion is that made me think of a flying carpet from Aladdin. <gasps> that yeah. kind of thing. So imagine how nice that would look on a velvet cushion. It'd look oh, really fancy. Wow. I think it does just smarten things up. Uh, it's, it, the it is. It's, it's, um, it's a step up, isn't it, in, uh, in sophistication with a bit of a tassel. So there we go, grab your tassel makers, grab your material. The material is 545 by half a meter. Do grab it and enjoy it and get making. Uh, we've had so many tools and bits and bobs this hour. Yeah. Um, it's been great fun, thank you ever so That's much. That's all right. Um, if you've joined us at home then, uh, and you've just caught the last of it, we have made uh, lots of, well, we've shown you lots of different embroidery. We've done lampshades, tassels for your lampshades yes. or for your cushions, Cording. whichever way that you want. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, this is the tassel. They're the tassels. Three different sizes, just from one. That was yes. made with the large tassel maker. Yes, so we made the small one. And we'll Perfect. The other ones. And now, tomorrow, is now a good time to talk about what we've got coming up tomorrow? Producer Paul? Yeah. Because if you're, you know, you might want to know. Oh, goodness. Plan your day. Watch this. Absolutely. So tomorrow, we've got... Oh, that's today. What about tomorrow? We've done that now. Hang on. Some, oh, there we go. So tomorrow we've got Tim Holt's laptop bag, your beginner's quilting, so useful cases, and it's Tilda time at 11 o'clock. Tilda. We love bag. a bit of Tilda time. Um, Victoria, thank you so much. That's you know quite all right. I'm back on Monday. Oh, what are you making on Monday? I'm using some Tilda. Oh, are you? Yes. Hey, it's always Tilda yeah. time in my household. Yeah, it's lovely. As far as I'm really concerned. Nice. Uh, so grab everything that you've seen that you love um, and get tassel making. Yeah, they're great. They are really good to make. I love them. Tassels can go on everything. Yeah, they can. Or just make yourself a cat toy. Oh, Your cat will love you. Your cats would love you. it. <laughs> yeah, they would. They would. They yeah. really would. They'd yeah. go crazy for it. Um, and then your cushions will be safe. Yes. Ah. Mm. Although they might go, oh, I've seen one of those before. Yeah. I'm allowed to play with those. That's what it is. We used to have a sofa with tassels all the way along the bottom. Oh.
Yeah, 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 back in the day. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining us today. I hope you've grabbed all the goodies that you've wanted. Thank you ever so much. Not also, a thank you for Sammy as well for all of her hard work this morning. We will see you again tomorrow morning. Take care. Sewing Quarter is at the very heart of sewing as we bring you all things sewing and quilting. The team behind us live and breathe sewing day to day. We strive to bring you exclusive offers, exciting live demonstrations, and most importantly, we will custom cut fabric to your specification in our very own cutting room. We will also be bringing you TV exclusives that you won't be able to find anywhere else. So come and join us today at the Sewing Quarter. Welcome to the Sewing Quarter! Quarter.